sustainable that holds our values and will be enjoyable for generations who will inherit it that from us. oh who so, just jumped in what? here oh that I think and we got of course, Theron and uh, Steve Theron and uh, everyone's favorite Destiny is joining us as well Destiny could you give us a little bit of an intro um hey what's up I do video games and politics I think most people here probably know who I am I think I've talked to most of you at one point or another right mm -hmm. Fuentes I remember Laura and I remember, right. and then <laughs> Roaming Millennial, I've seen you say a couple things, and then, uh, no bullshit, we've had the pleasure of talking a few times. What's up, guys? Good to hear from you, man. All right, and then Theron Meyer. Hi, guys. Sorry if these intros are taking a while. <laughs> Thank you for having me on, Lauren. Hi, guys. Of course. All right, so let's start things out with Nick. You are probably the most far right on this stream so you would see a very different future from the ones that people even on the alt light or of course steven or contrapoints would see where do you think you veer off from the traditional right people like roaming millennial and myself and why do you think the future you foresee with more of the alt right is preferable sure so where i veer off from the alt light where i veer off from a lot of these new characters that came about since the election is i'm a traditionalist um, a traditionalist conservative, more accurately. So whereas many people in the alt-light are classical liberals, self-described classical liberals, I define myself as a traditionalist conservative in that I value order, hierarchy, tradition, ritual over things like freedom, over things like um, economic liberty that a lot of the Ben Shapiro types enjoy. So my vision for the country is a country that is producing children again, is a country that uh, has Jesus Christ at its core, a country that has the family at its core, and a country fundamentally that people enjoy living in and is healthy for people's uh, mental and soul, you know, their their minds and their souls, so to speak. And so I think that's preferable in a lot of ways because you look at the, the Reagan revolution, for example, as, as kind of a good example of the triumph of classical liberalism, this, this purely materialist vision of our country and of the West, and you see that we still, even though we have wealth, even though we have freedom, we still have suicide epidemics. We still have drug epidemics. We still have um, all kinds of symptoms of a society that is not working. And so that's why my vision, I think, would work, because we're getting back to a country that is functional, that has the fundamentals right. Now, would you consider yourself alt-right, just to clarify things? I, I technically don't consider myself alt-right, only because... They tend to lose me on the pure racialism, the identitarianism, and specifically the racialist strand of identitarianism. I'm not about that. But do you want like a white America? Would you say that? Uh, is I want a white supermajority in America, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, no bullshit, roaming millennial, Theron. Uh, don't worry, Stephen, I will get to you. Would you say that you have any disagreements with uh, Nick on this? Um. Well, I'm someone who is also on the right. Um, something that, from what I've just heard him say, I do disagree with is that I'm someone who's on the right, but I am a someone who lives, leans libertarian. And from the sounds of it, Nick, you kind of lean more to the authoritarian spectrum. So I'm someone who, like Ben Shapiro, really values my things like economic freedom, individual liberty, uh, things like that. And so that's probably a disagreement we would have. And that's also one of the among many disagreements that I have with people who tend to be more on the alt-right, I tend to see um, this desire for, I guess, um, not, not you know, the social justice, more left-leaning type of government regulations, but still a very strong state or a very strong uh, state power. And that's, I'm someone who, I want small government and big community involvement, big churches, things like that. It's not that I'm a libertarian who thinks like, yeah, you know, we'll all just do drugs and have no roads, that kind of thing, no control. I'm just someone who would rather those sort of, I guess, tempering um, influences come from things like uh, community, smaller communities, churches, even on the state level, things like that. Now, Stephen, what are, what are your issues with adorable sweater man and wonderful <clears throat> small government? Neil, because I know you're probably seething there about people not doing drugs anymore and having traditional families. Oof, I'm never <laughs> seething. So basically, the undeniable reality right now is that the world is headed towards a more kind of um, globalist, w whatever you want to call it, um, thing. And that uh, it's probably the, the best thing that we can do is make sure that we kind of integrate ourselves into that world as effectively as possible to ensure that as many people are, you know, kept free and happy and economically prosperous as possible, rather than to try to hold on to this idea that we can keep the country looking like it did 50 or 100 or 150 years ago. 
why do you think this future is going to be more economically prosperous than what we had uh, 50 years ago, this globalist future you envision? Why, why will that uh, be a positive thing for the future? Uh, for me personally, I mean, I'm a capitalist. I'm a strong believer in capitalism. And in terms of like globalist policy generally being good for economics, that's not really an issue that's debated by any, I guess, any economist that I've ever heard of. The ability to work together with other countries to capitalize on each other's advantages. These are things that are generally accepted by pretty much all economists to be incredibly economically beneficial things. Of course, they bring other problems as well. But those are problems that I would hope to address. Um, rather than, I guess, some people kind of want to throw out the whole system because there are a couple things wrong with it and then go back to whatever we had 50 or 100 years ago. You're being shockingly reasonable right now. Um, I mean, I'm a very reasonable person. <laughs> to be unreasonable. <laughs> ContraPoints, welcome. Thank you for coming on the stream. I know uh, you guys can get in shit for associating with us horrible uh, fascist Nazis on right-wing YouTube, but uh, do tell me what your vision is for the future and where you would veer off from people like myself, Nick, and Roaming Millennial, and uh, others? Well, I would like to see an America that is a juster and fairer version of the one we already have, which is to say a country built by waves of immigration and not Disneyland for white supremacists. Disneyland for white supremacists. <laughs> Nick, you have a problem yes. with that. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, it's just funny to me because these people who talk about equality in one breath and then talk about mass immigration in another. What do you think is going to happen when you import people from the third world? You're going to get the same brutalism, the same despotism, the same tyranny, the same low IQ of the third world in our country. I just, I don't see how you square this circle. What happened when you had waves of Italian immigrants or Irish immigrants? People, well, that was the European. equivalent of the third world back then. No, no, those were followers of Christ. Those were Europeans and average IQs. You speak, sincerely you know, believe you know, that followers of Christ are going to cr wait aren't really mexicans so. mainly catholic I mean, too like what's up aren't mexicans catholics too primarily because in the early 21st century yeah. the catholic tribe right, the irish right. catholics it was viewed as papist invasion like i mean it's essentially the same argument no it's not i mean there's just there's differences between italians and anglos for example but the differences between mediterraneans and italians or excuse me mediterraneans and anglos is a lot smaller than the differences between sub-Saharan Africans and Anglos. I don't think anyone would argue it's the same. If you grant that this racist pseudoscience is correct. <laughs> no, but I mean, just not like, we're not, not not even talking about genetically, but just culturally, you have to admit that a Judeo-Christian culture, and I, you know, I'm including Mexico in this, is more, is more, that's right, I'm bringing the Jews into this as well, I'm counting them. Um, they're going to be more similar and have an easier time integrating um, than individuals from somewhere from like a predominantly Muslim culture. And I think we're seeing that, like, historically speaking, even people from Latin America are having an easier time assimilating culturally than what we're seeing in Europe right now with migrants from largely Muslim countries, right? There is that cultural difference that is harder to breach uh, the more different the cultures are. What, when you say cultural difference, like I don't understand where this idea is so funny hearing this because like in America, we don't have one culture. Like if you take somebody that lives in LA and you try to transplant them to a city in Alabama, or you even take somebody from New York and try to take them and transplant them to San Francisco, these are incredibly different cultures. What is this unifying, I, like what are some I, traits of this unifying I, American as culture someone, that- Yeah, as someone who grew up overseas in, in Asia and things like that, let me tell you, um, there are cultural differences between East Coast and West Coast. Absolutely, people, uh, you know, cold and uh, I guess always in a rush in New York, more laid back and friendly in LA, That those differences is pale in comparison to the differences we see when we're talking about uh, you know, like say Saudi Arabian culture, just basic things like are respecting someone's right to freedom of religion, well, so like it's, respecting women's rights, respecting the rights of- Yeah, so when, uh, when you, you say know, women's rights, rights, it's really, injury. it's interesting that you say that because if you look at somebody like LA, like if you take somebody from LA and you take their view on women's rights, you would find a lot more similarities between like a conservative, like Lauren Southern, her, her view on women's rights um, comparable to like a Muslim than you would to somebody in LA, right? The idea that women need to cover up, that they shouldn't what? show too much skin. Yeah, sure. So like when you get conservatives that say- that, Lauren, Lauren is not closer to someone who is an Islamic fundamentalist. Oh yeah, absolutely. In, in terms of like, in terms of what well, should women me... wear to be presentable in public, this is very <laughs> much me, a fundamentalist religious idea there. that women need to cover up in, in order to be in, in order to be presentable. Let me clarify. The difference is the choice to do so, and that it is not enforced by being stoned into the freaking ground by your Sharia police. Uh, I think it should be a choice. I always have been more libertarian 
on the values of, yes, women should be traditional. Yes, I believe you should not be running around like Miley Cyrus with a dildo strapped to you with your tits out. I think that's ridiculous. I don't think it's productive or to a good uh, society or anything that has produced a good society with the nuclear family. Uh, however, I don't believe you should be stoned for not doing so. And I think that is the fundamental difference between Islamic cultures who mm. do believe in this culture that, of submission. That's not Islamic kind of culture. That's the European culture. Western. But that's not Islamic culture. Beat. You keep saying Islamic culture. That's the culture of some very particular Islamic societies. We don't Most stone Islamic, people. No, wrong. That's the case from Morocco to the Philippines. I'm sorry. Can you tell me when Muslims in America have stoned a woman for not wearing a hijab? Can you give me that okay, story? Well, yes. It's an extremely well integrated Muslim population. In yeah, the like where States. is this happening? No, that's not true. You can look at uh, you can look at that city in Michigan. You could look at in Minneapolis where they have Somalis have taken over. Where you have entire taken towns. over. I'm sorry. Where yes, have we yes, lost Somalis? Somalis have taken the, over Minneapolis. Actually, yes, I remember when a bunch of Michigan, you have Minneapolis and Oh, Minnesota. Minneapolis, that Somali paradise. Yeah. How could I forget about Minneapolis? They're, they're resettling a lot of <laughs> Somali migrants. Hey, Wait, look, no, laugh it up. Well, up well I mean, the only time I remember I somebody... Like, you're going to be the first to go in the Muslim The, the only time... I hate to tell you. The only thing, the only but, time uh, I remember like sovereignty in the United States being threatened was when a bunch of rednecks in um, what state was it where they all tried to take <laughs> over the federal <laughs> land because they were mad that the government was trying to mark it off as like a park? Yeah, that's you the mean last. They, they constitutionally and legally seceded from the country. That's a far uh, cry the from the legal a secession by meme. Oh, the legal secession meme. It was meme. constitutional. <laughs> okay. Secession was, but look, that's beside the point. The South seceding from the Union is a far cry from a cultural and demographic subversion and invasion by the third world. I don't think anybody would, would argue that a change of regime and government is comparable to the fundamental transformation demographically of a nation and its people. I don't think anyone in their right mind would argue that. Yeah, but not everybody's, I guess, obsessed with this demographic change. And for something that seems so important to somebody that c calls themselves a traditionalist, this wasn't written into the Constitution at all, that we were supposed actually, to be something. Actually, it was. Like, it absolutely like wasn't. We said in our, like, I, like we said in our debate, it's in the preamble of the Constitution. But it actually for isn't in the preamble. And, and our posterity. Oh, but unfortunately, in the Federalist Papers, when he talks about our posterity, one, he never mentions race a single time. And two, that actually, same guy that you cite that mentioned posterity said that if he had the opportunity to, he would have banned Catholics from ever entering the United States states which you he yourself are does. in the he in federalist no. number two he doesn't explicitly say race, no he doesn't he's descending from the same stock if you want me to pull up the quote i can but we can i mean i have i have my own quotes as well stock. but you're you're quoting you're quoting a guy oh, not, you're not, quoting oh, a guy we, that we could, so we do you think talk about quotes all day long do, do you but think that catholics should is, do you think catholics should be banned from the united states as well then because he was quoted no, as saying I the same thing the definition can expand, but it must expand reasonably. The okay, definition if you want to reasonably to expand, Italian, Christian, no, no, Christian, dude, not to Somali Muslims. I don't think so. If you want to expand well, the definition, you can't. You, white America in the 1700s was Anglo-Saxon, not white yeah. European Christian. The idea that Germans and Italians and Spaniards were all seen as the same as British people is ridiculous. Destiny, who discovered the New World? Who discovered the New World in 1492? Who is the continent named after? Who who circumnavigated the globe? It was, it was Catholic, Italians, and, um, you know, again, reasonable expansion. You know, if we could go back to the 1924 National Origins Quotas, it's very laid out. You know, we would like, if it were possible in this day and age to have that Protestant Anglo-Saxon majority again, I think it'd be worth pursuing. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, demographically, it's just not tenable. So we reasonably expand the definition to Christian Europeans, and that's fine. And everybody right. understands what that means. Well, guys, just give me two minutes. Destiny, I will give you an opportunity uh, to... Uh, respond, but I do want to quickly calm things down. This didn't take long to ignite. It's lots of fun. Uh, but I do want to quickly bring in Theron and No Bullshit. But first, Theron, you are coming from a more centrist view. So watching uh, Nick and Steven argue over this, what do you make of it? Well, let's talk about immigration. I, I, I'm not quite as, I don't think that immigration, a, a more just society is necessarily a society in which there is more immigration. I actually think that a just society would be a society where immigration uh, ben uh, benefits the people in the nation rather than the people outside of the nation, the people immigrating. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think they're the ones who should benefit secondarily. Um, but I do think the whole conversation on mass immigration is interesting because I don't hear people taking much concern with the, they t take a lot of concern with the cultural differences 
between Muslims or people from Africa and Europeans or Americans, but they don't talk much about the differences um, and the problems with the differences between Western culture and say Asian countries, because I, I am engaged to a Korean man. And the only reason I'm in, I can be engaged to him is because he doesn't, he doesn't connect or identify with Korean culture at all. And I think if he did, we wouldn't be able to be together for reasons that it's extremely collectivist and conformist. It's, it's very antithetical to many Western values, such as individualism, okay, so, for example. So, so I don't hear- a step further and saying we need to cut out all the Asians. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying that um, not talking about about Asian, the very real problems uh, in Asian culture and how it differs from Western culture and how um, importing a lot of Asian people can change Western culture in a bad way uh, and rather focusing on all the brown people could come off as a dog whistle towards leftists that you're all just a bunch of racists. It is a dog whistle to everyone. <laughs> Can we, just no, that that you're all the... racist because you're all racist because you'd rather focus on the brown people than the less brown people. Uh, I'm not saying you're racist, but I'm telling you what it comes off as sometimes. Okay, let's let's uh, discuss that for just one minute here because th I think that's an interesting point. So I, I would say the same thing to leftists who focus on only white privilege and never mention Asian privilege, right? There seems to be this great ignoring of the Asian question <laughs> per se. Uh, the reality is though that Asians do uh, typically don't commit any crime. How often do you see Asian man shot in the street uh, for attacking cops or whatever? Never happens. They typically contribute to the economy. I do think there is a cultural aspect to it where they but certainly they don't really have... integrate either. For example, no, here I, I completely agree. we have we have we have uh, Chinese enclaves and they're completely uh, tight knit in their own communities. They don't integrate. Everyone talking so much about integration. Why do you care about brown integration so much and you don't even care about you don't even talk about Koreans? I'm just right. saying. Why don't right. we talk no, about my, white my integration? Last two videos, my last two videos I did exactly on this topic, Asian integration, though. So I, I would disagree with you. I understand your point uh, that people are focusing too much on maybe one specific thing, Islam, because a lot of terrorism is coming from there right now, which is giving a lot of media focus. But I disagree that people don't also talk about the problem with no integration from um Asian immigrants. No, yeah, maybe you're no one wants to talk about, about the maybe very well-integrated Muslim immigrants in the United States. There are many Muslim immigrants in the United States who are extremely well-integrated. And no one mentions it because you're focused on people who have been in Europe for three weeks. There's not really that many Muslim in America. It's like a 1%, very small amount of Muslims. That's what 1 I thought. 1% of that people is 3 million people in the United and States. Only, what, 5 and then right. I think the other issue here is we're talking about kind of an optics problem. Um, people unfortunately have a lot to do with what they see. And so this issue, it's kind of coupled with the stuff we were talking about before, since a lot of Muslims, most Muslims are brown and we're talking about the race problem, it comes off as racist. But I think, I don't think it's because they're brown. I think it's because of uh, the belief system and the differences between uh, the other reformed religions that we've mentioned before, Christianity and Judaism have both been reformed over time. And we've got, we've got a more progressive future future proofing there but we get, when you talk about muslims this is an ancient antiquated system that just doesn't doesn't work in america it doesn't it clashes too much because uh, like things we it mentioned before fine, i, I agree with uh, a lot of things that nick said earlier i'm probably not as uh, religious myself i'm virtually an atheist but i do still hold those christian values so you can be christian and this is a christian nation like it or not this it's was a not white a christian, christian nation that's absolutely not true white, is. This was yeah, a white is, where is it in the constitution Years. It's not a white. It's, I'm sorry, why would something so States important? White Christian ethno state. Why would it something so Who important like that? that? Why would they have specifically left out any and all references to the God and to God, and even went further to say that there was a separation of church and state? We're supposed to be a Christian. That seems so stupid. Why would you do that? I don't know. It, it looks because stupid you to you, but that's the, the way uh, it was. Look, there's a there's a fine line between the proposition nation that the founders intended this to be. They were all very liberal. You know, they read Rousseau. So that gives you some idea of how liberal they were. But the nation that was founded in 1776 was in character, in form, a Christian nation. And you can say, oh, well, it's not in the letter of the law. You can say whatever. But the fact of the matter is 
it was a Christian nation. The people that were here were Christian. The people that came here later were Christian. Until about 1965, this was a white Christian nation. And you can say that it's not in the letter of the law. They, I don't think they needed to put it in law because at the time— It was not I mean, a white nation. Imagine? It was not a white nation. Yeah, totally it was. Right. 80%, was 80% slide. white. It was 80% white, Anglo Saxon, was. not white. So Anglo Saxon. I'm going to mute people. All right. Okay. So I'm going to give Contra a chance to respond to Nick and then vice versa. And then we're going to move on to another person. So Contra responds to Nick and then. I want to claim that the United States <laughs> was an, is a white nation until 1965 when it was in fact 80% white. Europe, most every European country is far more white than that, and you claim that it's been severely compromised. How, in, what, yeah. in what sense well, is, my, is the Sure. Yeah, my response to that is when the nation was founded in 1776, the first census results are from 1790, and at that time the country was 80% white, the other 20% was black. Now, if you recall at the time, black people were not considered people. So I don't think it's fair to say that the nation was not founded as a white country when that 20% wasn't even considered. That's not, justify. That's not to justify. That's not to justify. There was white supremacy that in practice. That was white reality. supremacy in practice, racial egalitarianism that, in theory. Uh, it's because you have the white supremacy over and over doesn't make it yeah. true. <laughs> and by, do you want to say that the United States was not founded on principles of white supremacy? You want to say that slavery was not a white supremacist institution? Really? Uh, That's five it times. Matter, five dude. times. Does it, doesn't help your point. Look, and not for nothing, but the founders, the founders roll you up, you know, you're, 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 you're blocked on Twitter for a reason. I'm not afraid of you. That's why I'm here. I think you're pathetic. <laughs> all of you are pathetic. Yeah, okay. So fuck who are calling for my death and the death of all trans people. Yeah. Fuck you. Ooh, I'm not afraid of you. Fuck you. Who, 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 no okay, okay, okay let's, let's, let's address that quickly. Can, can I anyone, talk, can I so, see well, that? There's yeah, like yeah, a, yeah, okay. my turn. Yeah, okay, wait, wait, before we go to Darren, I need to, I need to make a quick announcement. This is very spicy, everyone. First of all, to the chat, thank you, everyone, for participating. I don't Thanks know how- Thanks so much. Yes, I don't know how to turn off Super Chat, so I can't read those comments, so I wouldn't suggest donating since I can't read it. I apologize uh, there, so just addressing that. Now, Theron, let's jump to you, everyone. Let's calm down the spice, put down the wine. <laughs> if I could <laughs> also address Theron's statement uh, regarding Asians after, uh, I just have something to add to that. You can address mentioned. the Asians, yes. <laughs> yeah, so I just find it interesting um, there's a lot of focus, even from people uh, like Nick, of the horrible cultural change that would happen from uh, importing all the Muslims. And I might even agree with that, but it, I just find it a little bit hypocritical because it, to me, it sounds like he wants to change American culture to something that it isn't, maybe to something that it was thousands of years ago or hundreds of years ago, but definitely something that it isn't anymore. And probably something that would be an existential threat to me as a trans person. Um, so I just, I just find that very rich and hypocritical. Um, like, sure, like I, I don't even think if it, if it has any more merit that you want to change culture into some, to American culture today into something that it was hundreds of years ago. Because I think that what it was hundreds of years ago represents, you know, what is written in the Quran in many ways very closely. So not much difference. Do I get a chance to respond to this, All right, Lauren? Nick, or we... response, and then we have to jump to roaming. <laughs> sure. Uh, well, what I'm talking, the change I'm talking about is, is going back to the natural order of things, the natural order ordained by God, which prevailed in this great land up until just about 50 years ago. So we're not talking about going back hundreds of years. We're talking about- That's exactly what Muslims talk about. Damage. That's exactly what radical Muslims talk about. Yeah, well, yep. and, and maybe maybe there's something to the conservatism of some of the Muslim <laughs> countries. <laughs> my point, exactly. <laughs> my point, exactly. <laughs> I'm not being right, hypocritical guys. by saying we want to maintain a conservative culture in so our in country. Your culture, in your culture, what, 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 what would happen to someone like me? Uh, you would probably have to see a doctor. You would probably have to see I a doctor. Oh, I mean, it's a therapist. Oh, so you give me conversion therapy. therapy. You'd put me through electroshock therapy, wouldn't you? Oh, I wouldn't. I, I would be done in a situation. This is why trans people, this is why leftists hate you. This is why they hate right-wingers, because they don't to do enough to speak out against assholes like you. I'm, I'm not. I'm not on board with what he's saying. Just BT dubs. 
throwing that out there. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe uh, running millennial, maybe you should maybe do a little bit more work speaking out against people like that. Maybe when you have people like Richard Spencer on your channel, don't just sit there and go, oh, that's nice. That's so interesting. It maybe, was an you interview. Should, maybe you should, no, but you still have a responsibility as an interviewer. Oh, that to Ruben. Challenge challenge so you should have allowed him. him. No, we're let me give roaming a response. Let me okay. finish my point. She maybe you should maybe you shouldn't just let him wrap his bullshit ideas in a beautiful pink bow, make it sound all cute. Maybe you actually have a responsibility to challenge him on it, on his ideas and expose it for what it really is. Because this Nick guy, that's exactly what it is. Okay. Okay. Everyone, everyone, this is Roaming's opportunity to respond to the the asian question and also uh wow okay <laughs> yeah a lot of things okay so first off maybe regarding the richard spencer interview i just want to say that i stand by that interview um if you watch it you can see that i clearly state that i'm not i'm not i'm not a good job you were irresponsible that, that i am not a white nationalist and i've even brought up things like uh the, the question of why it would be that white people will get along so great now when the history of European conflict shows us that the opposite is true, uh, things like that. But I, I do stand by that there is a difference between a debate and an interview. A lot of my subscribers were happy to actually see what Richard Spencer says. And, you know, if your problem is that he came off too positively, um, then, you know, you can feel free to make a response video to that. But in, in terms of the Asian question and Muslim immigration, um, I actually do think I get what you're saying, and there is definitely a problem with integration in Asian communities, especially, you know, East, East and West Coast of the United States and Canada. But the reason why it makes more sense to focus on the Muslim issue now is because they are they are more of an existential threat just in terms of safety through terrorist attacks. We see that now in the US, um, especially in, in, in the US as well, but what? especially like looking through looking at Europe right now. And, you know, I think Canada is probably going to be going down that road eventually just because of the amount of immigrants we're seeing because of the whole refugee situation. I think it does make sense to focus on the Muslim question first, but that doesn't mean that Asians get a free pass, right? And I think Asians are notorious. I don't even insular. care at this point. But they're, oh, Asians are notoriously it. insular, and that's 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 not uh, that's not acceptable. And I think part of the reason why we're seeing that is because that's what happens when you let in too many of the same group at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an argument for stricter border control and lower immigration numbers. If people come over more slowly, they'd have less of a chance to form these ghettos and insular communities, and they're, they'd be more forced to assimilate. So I, it's not that is, Asians get a free pass, it's just that I think there are bigger issues to focus on right now. But I mean, it's also, it's all part of the same question of immigration. What do you mean by insular? Okay Can I get like a definition of what it means to integrate? I'm really curious. Like, what is this idea? Sure. What is American culture? And what is what are these values that every person needs to integrate to? English sure, language. Well, um, my grandfather. So which, in other words, which values? My values or Nick's values? Or somebody well, actually, in Tennessee's values or someone in LA's values? Sorry, I keep interrupting. Go ahead. Yeah, well, so when we're talking about integration, my grandfather, who I love dearly, is an example of this. So um, a bunch of my father's brothers and sisters came over to Canada um, while they're in school. And later in life, my grandfather actually came over once they'd gotten their citizenship. I love my grandfather. He was a great guy. Never learned to, I mean, he was here for decades, didn't speak English. Same with his wife that he brought over. Not my biological grandma, she died, but didn't speak English either. They lived in buildings where a lot of the older residents, none of them spoke English. And I think language is a huge, uh, huge indicator of someone's assimilation level. If you can't talk to the population surrounding you, then it's a pretty good bet that you, you aren't, you're not on the same page with more civic issues or cultural issues, uh, th things like that. And with the Asian community, we're not really talking about a, an issue of religion since like most Asians are secular, but just, just culturally there, there's a huge problem with people not talking to each other, despite the fact that they live maybe streets down from each other. Okay. I think that was a hugely dishonest answer. When people talk about integrating to American values, the only thing you're talking about is English. I don't believe that. I think you just I'm, lied. I, what do you, what are you actually talking, talking about, about when you talk about regards to my grandfather? I, okay. He's I don't care about your grandfather. Father, though, when you talk about bringing Muslim people or other people over Asian. to the United States to when integrate, we're talking about Muslims. There is a difference. There is a difference thing. When we're talking about Muslims and the, so, what the is that, that difference? To, what values are you talking about? So, those values would be things like freedom of religion, respecting other people's right to practice their own religion freely, like we practice, like you can practice yours. We're also talking about women's rights. The fact that, um, like we're seeing in happening in London, if you are a Muslim man, you do not have the right okay, to tell so, women that they should be covering up because so, it does not affect you, things like that. Okay, so also, one at a time, on, on, on like things like women's issues, these are things that we don't even have a consistent view of in the US. Half the, half the country sure, is still- I'm pretty, I'm okay, pretty let sure everyone, everyone finish their comments or I'm gonna start muting mics. So Stephen, then roaming. 
we're gonna okay calm so, down. so on everyone, the win, everyone on the go get tea sure so on on, <laughs> on so just one at a time on these values because you, you keep presenting these as those there's like a consistent american view on on values which is ludicrous when you talk about women's issues there are people that think that some women should be able to breastfeed in public some women shouldn't be allowed to breastfeed in public some people want to hashtag free the nipple other people think that it's disgusting that women would wander around outside and these are all white american differences and ideas some people think that abortion should be something that every woman is entitled to other people think it's one of the greatest sins you can commit how could you possibly expect somebody to come to this country and integrate to our ideas about women's freedom what what does that even mean to an american well i'm pretty values. sure i'm, I'm the pretty sure values is the right to speak for themselves you speak Romy. i'm not going to interrupt you sorry but yeah i mean no bullshit has that exactly right we can disagree like oh um you know free the nipple or not but guess what we all agree that yeah women should be allowed to vote that women are not the property of their husbands that child brides are not mm. acceptable these are these are basic values that apparently in Islam that they, they a lot of them don't get that honor killings are not acceptable. That a woman who was raped should not be blamed for her rapist actions. These are things That's that an Amer Americans, these yes Americans agree on. All, no, we on don't. We're fighting yes. over that right now. Look at the big issue in Hollywood about what? accusing people of being rapists. Are you you're going to seriously say that we have a consistent? No one, view? no one is saying that the women who are alleging that they've been sexually abused. Uh, should be stoned because of the maybe not that stoned like but kicked out of their industry and shamed and cut off from future job Ooh, opportunities who's saying that everybody in hollywood for the past 30 or 40 years are you i yeah, can't tell if you're being serious men. right no now that. No no one one that's the okay, whole point <laughs> I feel like I'm like living like in an alternate reality. That's the whole reason why this is such a problem. It's because every woman that's spoken reality. out against it since now has been destroyed in their careers. They've been precluded okay, let's, from. Let's talk about that. I actually think that's a decent point because I've made this before. People will say, "Oh, Lauren, you think Harvey Weinstein is a problem? Suddenly, you believe in rape culture? No, that is not <laughs> the case. I do believe that rape does happen within our society, and I will agree that the rich and powerful do not play by the same rules as the rest of us. They can finish." things they can make sure people can't get jobs they can uh, get all sort of legal contracts but when someone is like unequivocally proven to have raped another individual society as a whole within the west rejects them and that is illegal exactly. they are put in jail within yeah. islamic societies that is not within the law and the popular culture that is the difference i do see where you're coming from when you say harvey weinstein was able to get away with horrible things because of his power but i don't think that is what it's it not is representative like of the overall culture. uh culture that's why everyone was pissed when that came out in the news, and that's why everyone's hanging Harvey Weinstein and Kevin Spacey because we're They're against saying, those that's things. That's not why people we are can't mad. Even people watch, are we mad. Can't even watch House of Cards anymore. That's the number one trending thing. Like, is it okay to even watch the show that Kevin Spacey was in? That's how crazy we are about it. Yeah, people aren't that, upset because thing, people but... got raped. That's not why yeah, this is such a huge that's deal. What I'm saying. People yes, are upset. <laughs> people are upset that because people why. kept this under wrap for decades because it was impossible for a woman to come out and say anything when people talk about the existence of rape culture, this is the kind of stuff they point to. If you're a woman and somebody in a position of power propositions you for sex, you don't really have the ability to consent, yes or no, and if you decide to not consent to that kind of activity, well, now you're going to face repercussions in your job. This is, or, le or, or in a whole other no. to They could say no. No, you can't. Yes, they can. They no can bullshit. Say, I think this conversation should be restricted to people that have actually had sexual relationships before. Okay, you okay, do not have the ability. You do not have the ability to say no to your boss. Are you serious? If your boss I mean, probably no. If your boss says have sex with me, you just say no. Because you, you don't know home. what the repercussions are going to be to your job, dog. But you always have an option. And no, I think you it's, don't. I think it's awful that their careers are being threatened, but what he's doing is illegal. And once it was brought to light, people are outraged. And that I think that goes to show that this is not acceptable behavior, what he was doing. And it is a shame that he got on for so long doing it. But I think it, it's more indicative and more telling of the culture in Hollywood specifically and the power dynamics over there than our general Western society. If a woman is propositioned by her boss, she absolutely can say no. She can go to human resources. She can file sexual harassment complaints and he will be fired i, I mean I, I don't really know what to say like the, the reason why this so is such many a people who have gone to human resources yeah and not <laughs> like how it's like a different reality the they've been relocated like this this is in every industry in america like the idea that this is a unique thing to hollywood is wrong well if you did no, this you know, Islam, you know how if we you could did prevent... this in saudi arabia there wouldn't be an hr department there wouldn't be media outrage you would just be saying, okay well there's an hr department here and they're in Saudi Arabian immigrants will get used to that. We can easily prevent all sexual assault in the workplace if our women 
We're at home raising the kids. <laughs> Again, not... Oh, dear God. <laughs> not, um... Why, is... Why are we here? Why are we doing this? I'm being <sighs> serious. I'm being serious. I mean, uh, you have a, a, you actually have a 0% chance from... Uh, That's not true. Men can sexually or, harass other men. No, no, I said, I said from 9 to 5, if you're at, if you're at home... Raising the kids, not going to get sexually harassed by some uh, by some pervy. So, and in what way is that different? Type. In any way from the like the most radical jihadist assessment of women's role in society? It's it's the fundamentalist, the natural, intuitive character of the relationship between men and women that that's how it goes. I mean, how to is that different to you than the past? No, and no, not to no, me. no, no. The intuitive to the past ten thousand years of human civilization. I mean, I that's just the program. Correct. Okay, I, you Where know, is... I'm just going to jump in here quickly. I, I actually would love to be a stay-at-home mother one day, raising kids. That's something I enjoy. That's something my sister wants to be. That's something a lot of women I know want to be. However, Nick, I do want to ask you. I, I don't know if that is a possible future in our current economy and where it's already. Mm -hmm. Uh, been going in this direction where you can't even raise a family on one income. So do, do you see that as a little utopian? No, I understand that concern, but the, the issue is not like whether it's possible tomorrow. The, the, the issue of a woman's role or, or what the direction should be for women is, is what should we be striving for? You know, should we be striving to push women into the workforce, to push them onto the fucking battlefield? in Iraq and into the, the assembly lines and into this neoliberal hellscape, or should we be pushing them back? Look, mommy's home, you know, honey, you know, dinner's on the table. Should we be pushing them towards that? I mean, that's fundamentally the question. So I understand if, if women have to work in this day and age, it makes perfect sense. I mean, the economy has been destroyed and pillaged by rootless transnational globalists. And so unfortunately that that is reality today, but in the future, we'd like to see women fulfilling their biological um, necessity there and having the kids, having those okay. kiddies. Well, I'm I glad think, that he proved I my point about like radical writers right, being. Let's, let's let Roaming jump in here. Contra, you obviously disagree, uh, but Roaming, I think, is more interesting because you're still on the right, but you seem to disagree with <laughs> right. It, right. So I, I'm someone like you, Lauren. I would love to be a stay at home mom. That'd be absolutely my dream. But I think we have to look at this realistically. If we look at um, like incident indices globally of women's participation rate in the workforce, there's a strong correlation between high GDP per capita and women's participation in the workforce. And that's pretty obvious if you think about why. It's if, you know, if half your population were working, if population is just staying home, that doesn't really translate to a strong economy. And if you also think about the, how long women have to be there to be the primary caregivers for their children, um, you know, women, like, let's say people have 40, maybe even 50 working years today. Women don't need to be at home the entire time that they're working. That's not even counting things like part-time work, which a lot of mothers do very well, especially when their kids get older. And so I think there doesn't need to be this, you know, one or the other approach when we're talking about women in the workforce. I very strongly believe that families are super important. I think that whenever possible, financially, it's not always possible, but if possible, it is a great thing to have a, a full a parent there for the kids when they're younger. Um, but but women have long lives people have long lives kids the time that they're at home is finite and women should still be able to participate in the economy when there are no children around especially when we're looking at jobs i mean i don't know nick what, what you think about this like would you restrict women's ability to become things like teachers or nurses which are predominantly uh, female dominated roles not by law no but i think we should discourage women from getting into the workforce i think to deprive a child of a mother and a father growing up you know that they get shoved into some daycare looked after by someone who doesn't care i mean that's fundamentally at the core but i mean i should post about this often but i mean that's when you, it comes down to it you talk to any child uh, whose parents are divorced or who wasn't raised by a mother and there's a marked difference in people who are raised by a mother who's staying home and, and really cared about the kids and cared about their diet, their social life, their education, and looked after them. It's not like it'd be nice if you know we had a mother to stay home. It's a necessity for the child. I agree. And to say I that, agree. Or, or, and I mean, my mom to... worked. I turned out just fine. Look at me. Uh oh. <laughs> Did you? I mean, to disregard <laughs> that, you know, for GDP, <laughs> I think is uh, a neoliberal. Yeah, but... But Nick, again, what you're talking yeah. about, it, like children need a mom to be home. Again, like the the time that a children is home is not the entire span of a woman's life or even her range of fertility, right? And, and if during high school, for example, kids aren't home full time, what's wrong with the mother working part time? What's wrong with the mother working before, before she has children? Actually, a lot of people meet their future partners in the workforce. Um, yeah, so again, like discouraging women from working entirely because they have to stay home and raise children. I think you're overestimating how many years we're living and how many hours there are in a day. 
No, but we're not talking about women getting like a part-time job while the kids are in high school. We're talking about, and it is black and white. It's not so much gray. It is black and white of whether or not, because you saw the trend for the past 40 years has been the, the stay-at-home mom is a loser. The stay-at-home mom is not cool. She doesn't live in the fast lane like uh, Tina Fey in New York City. You know, you got to be an astronaut. You got to be a STEM. You could be a Jedi. You could be a fucking superhero. The, we have to point the arrow back towards rearing kids. And you say, you talk about it like it's one kid. We're talking about we want to have lots of kids, lots of kids, and there's many reasons for that. Uh, but we want we want the ladies to be having the kids, raising the kids, looking after the home. And it's better for them, too. They're happier in, in that setting. They are happy. And you can say, oh, you know, I'm a working woman, and I'm happy. But the studies show that women are happier when they're at home, when they have their kids. It's more fulfilling. It is, uh, it's more satisfying. And, you know, what's more satisfying? Doing spreadsheets and preparing a, a presentation for the big sales pitch or being at home, being with little babies and taking them to the park and, and playing games with them. I'd rather play Go Fish with my kids than go and, and be a fucking lawyer, you know, for, for bankruptcy law, right? Mm -hmm. And I actually, I absolutely agree. And that's why even myself personally looking at what I want in the next 10 years, honestly, I've got to say that my career ambitions are very limited in the fact that I would so rather be a mom. But again, that doesn't like, that doesn't mean, for example, what Lauren and I are doing right now, like it doesn't need to be either or and women have that ability to do both, especially before they have children. And when we're looking at the fertile window, let's say like 25 to 35, that is by no means of someone's entire working life. But I mean, we can we can move on or, or bring Contra into this. Right. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Well, first of all, no yeah, Stephen Contra, why, why white, do you hate women white. kissing babies? Why? I don't. I mean, I have no problem with any of this, and I support white genocide. Okay, I <laughs> love babies. Why not just give people the choice to do what they want? Like, I don't understand that's, why that's yeah, because, like, that's it's exactly it's the ultimate choice. irony is seeing people like kind of roaming millennial and then super Lauren Southern who don't have children, talk here and espouse like the most important job of a woman is to be a baby pumper. But here you guys are pursuing your careers as much as I vehemently disagree with both of you, doing things that you probably couldn't do if you had a kid. You talk about how like 25 to 35 isn't the entire lifespan of a woman. Um, taking two or three years out of your 20s, late 20s, early 30s, your most important like early establishing career building years, that's a big commitment from some people. And both of you have made the, the choice not to do so, um, n not to have children and instead pursue this whatever kind of quasi career thing we all do. I'm ready to go right i'm ready to go right now but the thing is when we say that women should have children or at least i, I mean i'm not gonna talk for anyone else here but you know that doesn't mean have children before you're financially sound that doesn't mean have children before you found a partner that you can build your life with right i mean I, like i'm not just saying get pregnant as soon as possible it's have I, like have be financially stable have a partner who's going to be there because i think like father figures are so important to be there for your child. Like it's not just pop out babies indiscriminately. That's actually, I think very much the opposite of what needs to be done. And I think we see the damage of just having children without any care or concern of how you're going to raise them. And I mean, like I'm 23 and I have no doubt that there's there's still some time left on these eggs. So I'm not really worried about it. I think yeah. too- let, let me just jump in here for a second. Sorry, sorry, no bullshit. I just wanna expand on that. I completely agree with the, one of the big problems is women just deciding I'm gonna pump out babies and not consider having a father, single fatherhood, uh, not single fatherhood, but single motherhood rather right. causes for almost double the suicide risk for a child, more likely to be an alcoholic, more likely to drop out of school, more likely to be homeless. All of these things increase with single motherhood. And that is something that is expanding because of irresponsible behavior. So Roaming and I both do not want to be irresponsible that way. Also, I want to address quickly, Stephen, your point saying, just let people do what they want. I actually agree with you there. However, I, I have to defend Nick because he was saying, I just want to move the culture in this way. I don't want to force people to do any but of that's... this. I want to direct the culture towards something where people make decisions that statistically make them happier. If you read books like Charles Murray's Coming Apart, the statistics in there show that Yes, having children gives you a more fulfilling life. It gives you, uh, yes, more ups and downs. And sometimes you won't be as financially rich as you could have been, but it does give you more meaning in your life. And some people appreciate that and want that in their society. And There's culture. a huge difference between saying, I think everybody should be able to choose to do what they want to do, but I think that most women would be happy doing this. There's a difference between that and then going on Nick's Twitter and then seeing him find some woman that wants to join like the pharmaceutical industry and being like, look at this dumb fucking cunt. I can't believe this stupid bitch wants to join the working whoa, world what a whoa, fucking idiot whoa. that you were railing on that chick because she wanted to get I a normal job no, 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 
about you her. were oh, railing on that chick. Anger. Look, listen, uh, Bob, man. Now we, listen, now we Bob, pretend. Man. Maybe you can't understand righteous <laughs> Christian passion. No, because I don't give a difference. fuck about your imaginary <laughs> boogeyman in the, the sky. Passion. We don't all live Whoa. our lives by fucking I think that's Yahweh. Really, actually, hey, I tip, I tip my fedora to you, Destiny. Uh, yes, I see we have I a fellow is... big brain nibba atheist here. But no, look. I am passionate because I see women for throwing their ovaries and their lives down the drain because some commercial, some like Hyundai Sonata commercial said, look, women can be Jedi if you, and they should be astronauts. Women could be happy, you know, maybe if they're being a secretary, maybe if they're being a teacher or, you know, a, a whatever. But when they pursue these careers at the expense of a, a strong husband, a household, Beautiful children. It's a terrible mistake that they are making on the micro level and that we as a nation are making on the macro level. I want them to be happy. I only want women to be happy. I'm the most feminist person here. I want women to be happy. <laughs> well, I, I just I appreciate you stating your views clearly earlier. So then you guys understand that this is essentially like fundamentalist Islam, right? This is pretty closely aligned with their views on women, right? We, you understand that. Lauren, do you understand no, that? We don't. We don't well, that. like I said, the the oh. difference is, yeah, the difference is force, and it being enforced by a fist or a rock uh, or whatever. Okay, but like excessive yeah. bullying or moving the culture in a certain direction, you know, like this doesn't. As long as there's not an actual gun held to their head, it's a totally different thing. Yes. Of course it is. Okay. <laughs> 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 Yeah. I remember when I was 19 I and I had that crazy one-dimensional view of the world. It felt so good. Oh, man. Whew. I think what I was going to say was just that, um, yes, families need fathers, too. And I think what we're talking about is not just a mother, not just a father. We need family units mm -hmm. producing uh, just well-raised kids. And that's that's a good point. And I think uh, what Destiny was doing, Destiny is a stripper name, by the way. But when Destiny was addressing <laughs> uh, Twitter, he was, he was taking jokes or trolls out of context to try to make them as serious statements and he does that all the time and that's fine if that's how he wants to style that's well cool. you just get mad because you make a lot of statements where you lie and then you pretend later that you were trolling like when you said you weren't fat as fuck and then everybody saw you i'm not sure what, what that has to do with anything but i was gonna it has talk nothing about... to do with anything yeah just absolutely nothing to do with absolutely anything. nothing at all yeah so I, what i was going to talk about is the forced part too like uh, we're trying to act like th these things are being forced we're talking about pushing the culture in a direction we're talking about making it okay for women to have babies where and we're in a place like you said with uh, examples like tina fey and stuff we're talking about pushing single motherhood or even just single moms not even having kids sorry just single ladies and that is supposed to be championed right now when we've proven right. we've proven statistically that women aren't happy that way. They're happier with kids. They're happier in families. They're happier in marriages. And the other thing I'll say as far as uh, a choice between career and children, um, no one ever regrets their children unless you what? had destiny. <laughs> How can unless you, you say had that? destiny as your kid, unless you're <laughs> destiny's parents, no all one right, regrets having right, their guys. kids. You, Why not just let women make job. choice on their own? Why force people or try to no bully one, people no or move people? No one is saying anything about forcing anybody. We're you're just talking about saying force. Right. We're well, just women already have the choice to have kids now. Our culture or change our cultural attitudes toward families. No one's talking about forcing anyone to do anything. And nobody in our culture right now is saying women can't have kids. Who is this invisible boogeyman no, that's saying? No like, one is saying. Okay, when we're talking about this, we're talking about cultural norms and prevailing social attitudes. Right now, no one's saying no one women cannot have kids, but there is a very, very strong narrative being pushed toward young women that they should be going after their careers rather than families, and that even like white people shouldn't be having kids at all. Like these are Wait, who says attitudes. white people shouldn't be having kids at all? Well, who, who okay, which mainstream prevailing mainstream narrative. mainstream by who? All if it's prevailing place. mainstream, the name one just person. Did an article on it. The Spectator just did an article on it. It is all saying why white people shouldn't have. Kids. So I can. Go on white. the I can go okay on the independent and I can find a, a, an article where they say white people shouldn't have children. I will go and find these. These this I would really love to see that article. Oh, yes. Oh, sorry. Actually, you know what? Sorry, I apologize. I will correct myself there. It didn't say white people. It was saying why Western people shouldn't have children, why women would be happier without kids. But there are a lot of narratives specifically about destroying the white nuclear family. Mm -hmm. Where where who? Thing that is prominent. It, within classrooms, I learned this in my oh, feminist okay. studies within class. Classrooms. So you in, can't name a single university. major this figure. This is something that I learned in university. Okay, so you can't name a single ma So this is a prevailing thing in mainstream culture, but you can't name a single prominent figure that pushes it. That's what you're saying. Yeah, but, uh, no. Destiny. If you if you go like okay. just. 
Go go on Twitter. Just just go no, on Twitter. No, I don't get my politics from Twitter, dog. I get my politics no, from actual politics policies is, that are passed in Congress. Is that act- from culture. We're okay. talking about culture right now. Right. And no one's saying that it's illegal for white people to populate, but a lot of the regressive left, they are trying to push this idea that if you are a Western and a woman, you should not be having children. And that is that is an issue, and that is an attitude that I think we need to That you've seen from yeah. people on Twitter, and that's that's like okay, the main informing life. thing in your life. Like, it's this a, is what I'm fighting against because no, I saw some really Lauren bad Southern, tweets in a Sargon Southern, video. Like, go, on, go on the Independent, right? Lauren, Lauren Southern- On the has, Independent, she just said that article didn't exist. She, she said it, it talked about no, 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 women the, having children. Uh, this is my guess. Without ever reading that article, my guess is going to be that the actual article itself is probably pretty nuanced. It probably has something to do with Western people contribute more to climate change or some shit like that. I'm probably not going to read the article and come away thinking, wow, they really want white people to have less kids. That would be my guess if I had to read the article without ever having seen it or heard of it before. Right, but the issue is you have the exact same thing said by Macron where he says, hey, in Africa, they should stop having so many kids because it's hurting their ability to raise them properly and to raise healthy children and everyone calls him a racist so for some reason it is racist for macron who is everyone say, hey you shouldn't be having nine babies who the, is the everyone BBC did an article on it you shouldn't be having nine babies in africa that's so i can find a bbc say, article say, calling macron have racist kids repeatedly in europe don't have kids repeatedly in america that's suddenly like a-okay that is a great narrative so, and in fact lots of feminist philosophers say we must will, will you deny the fact that many feminist philosophers say we must dissolve the white nuclear family no this is the problem when you argue you. with you people is that what you guys do is you find like if i want to argue against a policy what do you by mean, you people you people you know what i mean when <laughs> i want to argue against a policy by say republicans in the united states or right-leaning uh, politicians in the united states i can point to actual legislation penned by actual congressmen and senators in congress and i can talk about the impacts that these things will have so for instance um attacks on women's rights to choose for an abortion or the north Car- uh, north carolina voter id law or different or the transgender ban that trump was doing right i point to these things and i'll say these are problems but then for lauren or roaming millennial or no dumbass or whatever what you guys will do is you'll find well look at these seven tweets that i found and and look at the professor that i had in college like how can you think that these things are at all the same type of thing the when- professors are actually more important again politics oh my is God. downstream of culture you change culture first and then politics eventually ends up reflecting how- that do you it's really like believe you at- that do you really believe what of you're course. saying right now so you of believe course, that right now people, a person the people hang on destiny i'm a woman let me talk stop mansplaining the people People that are being taught by these professors right now, or even like younger than that, in in, in Sweden, there's like there's the uh, there's a state school system. It's you you don't have things like private schools or charter schools like we do have. But when you when you have this almost anti-Western bent being taught from from the time children go to school, especially when they're in university, that affects the way people think, and eventually that affects the way people vote. You're- so yes, that, that is even more important than legislation. So- it's very easy to overwrite legislation. It's very hard to change <laughs> it's- the way people Your think. entire argument is that okay, if the- Okay, wait, 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 the- let me just jump in here. Sorry, I just want to point out that The Guardian called Macron racist, uh, Vox called Macron racist, The Independent called Macron racist. This is just the first page of articles. So just, there are backups to what I'm saying, but continue. Um, I, I would love to see the articles. I'm curious about it. Yeah, we can look it up. But essentially oh, oh, what you're... Look it up. Yeah, yeah I, I will. Essentially what you're saying... Everyone, I got a peace out. I've got a voice training appointment, but uh, Theron and Destiny, I'll buy you a drink later and peace. Thank you for see joining you later, us, Contra. I really appreciate it. What you're essentially saying is that right. if the leftist policies in the school carry on long enough, it is possible that at some undetermined date in the future, left-leaning thought might actually make it to Congress where right-leaning thought is now. That's what you're no, essentially not, not, saying. Not only that it's possible, but also just that it's it's manifest in our lives right now. But you can't like, point out a so, single way it has been in terms of legislation or it's policy. Manifest, you're, ta- it's you're talking about tweets. In our statistics. Look at the number of unwed mothers. Look at the number of single mothers. That's it manifest right there. So look left-leaning the thought is causing... Look at the number of children who are look at right, the number right, of right. not having children. It is manifest in our society right now. What policy has look, a Democrat proposed to the United States that's that's caused this to happen? Well, I think abortion would be one of them. The welfare state would be another. Abortion Women contributes know. to single. That's literally the opposite of having an, an unwed single mother. It's no. It's, I mean, we're talking about we're talking about life choices in general and the way now that abortion is so readily available, women are free to be a lot more promiscuous and they're making worse decisions for their lives. And the level of promiscuity that women exhibit during their dating period really affects the, their their likelihood of forming long term stable commitments like marriage later on in life. So, so all you of think these- the government needs to be legislating morality for how promiscuous we're allowed to be? I thought you were the person of small government. Thank you.
I didn't, I didn't say they need to legislate you can't sleep with these people. But when we're talking about things like, oh, let's say welfare states, like if, if you enable a behavior and make it easier to do, you're you're encouraging it. And it's it's not that we need to outlaw promiscuity, but we shouldn't make it easy for large single mothers or single mothers to have these large families that they're raising without fathers. We shouldn't be subsidizing that because it encourages that behavior. Okay, I, right, I mean, I, I can... I'm going here quickly. I will give you a chance to respond, but we've had someone join the chat. Who is bright side here? <laughs> oh, I, I, hello. I, I heard there was an Oompa Loompa meeting going on, so I wanted to join oh, in. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> we've got Meadow. This is the uh, under four feet tall club, right? Uh, did I jump into the right stream? <laughs> I, I think you're here. Did you wear the costume? Yes, did I did. I, perfect. I dress as a perfect. leprechaun, so I think I should fit in. Excellent. What do you have to contribute to this wonderful stream so far, Metalcurs, since you've decided to join us? I, I've just been enjoying listening to everybody yell at each other. That's been fantastic. Who doesn't like that? A nice heated debate uh, going on is always entertaining. <laughs> All right, perfect. Uh, Steven, did you want to continue? Yeah, so I guess like in terms of American long? values or American society, I, I thought that, or at least for my goal personally, for my personal philosophy, is you always want to enable people to make the, the most choices that they can to maximize their own personal happiness. So things like access to contraceptives or things like uh, giving women the right to choose for an abortion, these are positive things. Um, if you want to argue against it, I mean, you can, but that seems to be, like earlier, I think you made fun of Nick because you said that he was authoritarian and you were libertarian, but now you're talking about how the state needs to cut off access to things like abortion right. because we're enabling women to make bad choices or something. Well, I think abortion is its own thing because I think, you know, someone's freedom to abortion is not trumped by the right of a fetus to, you know, not die. Um, but when we're, we're talking about things like the welfare state, which I also mentioned, the welfare state is basically the antithesis of small government. Yeah, I don't disagree with that, but but we're and not that, talking about the welfare state. You were talking about like the promiscuity of women is like that was an well, issue that needed both. to be addressed it's, it's by both. government. And, well, it's both. So the welfare state and abortion, those things in tandem have, I think, very much destroyed the the prevalence of the nuclear family, especially when we're talking about low income communities. And if we're we're looking at that now, like, you know, 40 years ago or 50 years ago, the African-American instance of, you know, marriage what was was comparable to white families if we look at that now it's it, it's totally been destroyed and we we can't ignore the policy implications that have come from things like you know enlarging the uh what you call it the the welfare state and you know when we're talking about i've by the way never said we should limit um access to contraception that's something you threw in there just want to mention that's something i've never said but we we can't ignore that when we subsidize something we make it we make it easier to do and that's very much the fact with with single mothers right now we're yeah, I mean, okay, I, guys, I, I mean, let's, okay. This this is getting a little. This is stagnating in one spot. We're just screaming at each other about single motherhood. Not that it's not uh, a fascinating topic and a massive problem in the West right now. But I do want to see if anyone wants to move on to any other topics so that we can keep this entertaining, keep this fun, and move on to other people. Nick, there in Medicare, anything you want to talk about? Not in uh, particular. No, bullshit. no I'm good. Um, uh, I mean, if we're opening it up to just different topics of conversation uh destiny what brand of stilts do you use because i <laughs> that was a nice one dude i love it when people that, that literally use a cartoon <laughs> avatar build their entire personality around attacking no, other no, people's no, physical get, appearance. that's get, actually really funny to me get off dude. Your high horse, that's right? really good you go got you got any more there in your little book there i know how long you've been waiting book. for this you're Are like you sure re you're real you're real excited here to I do it keep going my dude what cartoon picture did you use to represent yourself for this conversation buddy oh just the standard just the standard google one that's pretty funny dude you, you should appreciate You're it. You're hilarious. Bring it. You're a riot, my man. I know. I know you love it. I know you love it. That's why I'm here well, to, bring, this, to bring the band to Destiny. This has just spiraled into productivity, guys. Um, well, people in the chat, and I don't, I've don't. i talked a lot, so I don't need to start on this, but people are in the chat are asking about um, the whole it's okay to be white thing. So I don't know if, like, Theron, Destiny, any of you guys have any, like, maybe we could talk about that. Sure. Uh, perfect. I All don't know. Right, is anybody is, is anybody in this call selling fucking T-shirts about this? Because that's kind of it's kind of gay. I got to be honest. Because I've I've heard some people are trying to trying to make some money off of that, and it's a it's a little bit dumb in my opinion. Right. I, I'm actually going to be hoping to go out and put some of the posters out soon. I think it's a perfect perfectly uh, reasonable thing to put out and to support. It's simple. Pisses people off for all the right reasons. T-shirts a little silly. Uh, manufacturing at mass but steven do you find it's okay to be white particularly offensive um i mean it's pretty obvious what the goal is i guess if your goal is to just piss people off i mean it's, it kind of reminds me of the all lives matter movement 
Well, no, it's to expose a clear hypocrisy. Well, no, it I doesn't mean, really campus, expose any hypocrisy. You, it's you, like, you had a it's... campus come out and say this message does not represent our university, a message that says it's okay to be white. You really just read it. You just really, you read the line, Lauren, and that's it. You just take it at face value like that. <laughs> what? What are what? you talking about, Destiny? It's think... obvious what's going on in the country with okay. an anti-white bias. Anti-white. Oh, God, it's so hard Absolutely. to be a white man today in hey, America. Steve. Oh, God. Steve, well, oh. actually, it's easy because oh, being man. white, we are, we are pretty strong. We've been through a lot, so it's not oh, difficult. Geez. But there is an anti-white bias. Look, affirmative action policy. Oh, man, affirmative yeah. action. Holy shit. My, you know, That's all that generational crazy. wealth handed down by whites over and over again. And, oh, no, some ki- in some schools, hey, in Destiny, some schools, some kids. Oh, man. Wealth. I oh, I'm glad that your anything. personal story is representative of the average white man in the United States. Once again, you oh, display a, such is, a cunning understanding is, of statistics and data. Keep it up. The point is the only institutional discrimination in the country today is against white people. And you, I'm sure, maybe you're some kind of Black Lives Matter cuck, but many people have it in their minds that, that black people are discriminated against, that there's this institutional racism against non-whites. But in fact, the only institutional on-the-books policies that discriminate in practice in, in written code against white people are those affirmative action policies. And you ask if those hurt people. You ask if that makes a difference. Of course it does. You know, that you tell somebody who's white, they don't get to go to college because of the color of their skin. They don't get Oof. a job because of the color of their skin. Too bad in places where that was challenged, like at the University of Texas, they still took the top 10% of applicants and the Supreme Court struck that down as not necessarily oh, being a racist oh, policy. You're using your oh, personal man. story to disprove My personal data. story? I'm not a UTech student. I'm <laughs> sorry. I didn't know example. that citing You're Supreme right, Court law. Example. And if you want to talk about actual discrimination, well, we can go back to more Supreme Destiny. Court law, like the voter ID laws in North Carolina. We all, hmm. we all know there's an answer. Voter, voter ID laws do not discriminate by, like, by their written law against any race. But they do. Please stop. Oh, God. Affirmative action policies are explicitly (sighs) racist and not just against whites, but also against Asians. I mean, like, write a letter to the Supreme Court, dude. I don't want to argue their case against you. I mean, like, in North Carolina, it was very, very clearly targeted towards black people. The state legislature requested data by racial breakdown in order to disallow the very specific dates that black people voted and the very specific types of ID that black people used to vote and to close very specific black majority voting booths, right? I know that for people like you, for the enlightened centrist, if it's not there in the letter of the law, you don't think that it's racist, but for the rest of us that have to deal with the pragmatic implementation of policy in the real world, these things end up being pretty fucking racist. Destiny, I'm this just, little guy, guy, you must hate All right, all right, wait, 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 wait. You're, always making You're always making excuses. I like to say, let's hold everybody to the same standard. Let's have the same expectations of everybody. I think the people, not to go Dems are the real racists, but you know what, Destiny? You don't care about black people. In fact, I think you think less of black people because you read into their, their experience all these excuses. Oh, well, it was voter ID laws. Oh, well, it's explicitly anti-black. No, no, no. The truth of the matter is how much money has been dedicated to these programs for inner cities, for black youth, for blacks in STEM, for blacks in college, diversity quotas, and and nothing's changed. So it's time to say, you know what? We are in the post-racial America. I grew up in a country where there was no institutional discrimination. It's time to say, look, Everybody's got to play ball. Everybody's got to play by the same rules. How do you explain studies where they take where they take similar applications and they switch out a white name with a black name and the guy has a 50% chance less of getting a call back? How do you explain something like that? If I, oh, I, I can explain that easily because okay. blacks and whites, there are differences in the representation and the statistics. For example, if you look at the crime statistics for 2016, you look at just about any, no, I think it's all measures of crime and black people commit by far and away more crime than white people. And by the way, the proportions are, are virtually the same, whether it's rape, murder, how, you know, whatever you want to divide it by. So, but so wait, before we get into crime stats, why, why did you pivot? Why did I pivot? Why is it fair I that if a black guy has the exact same application as a white person and his name is switched with the white person, he'll have twice the chance of getting what, hired? What, and by the way, where does this happen? Where does this happen? What? It's one of the, the most popular happens. studies on institutional racism in the sure, United let's States. See this, what study? What study? <sighs> Hold on. <laughs> actually, actually, you know, actually, no, it doesn't exist, Bob. Doesn't actually, actually regarding that study, I have heard of it as well. No, everyone has heard of it. It's like it's one of the most off-sided Destiny, things. I'm throwing like... you a bone. Just, just hold on a sec, okay? Right. But I think what's interesting regarding that study, if you look at what are the traditionally black names that they've chosen, they're actually, I mean, they're things like you know, Shaniqua, things like that. Black people can have names like Darren, like Wilson, things like that. So if the black person has the wrong name, it's okay to discriminate against them? Hang on. I'm I'm making a point, Destiny. How do you think a white person with a name like, I don't know, Billy Bob Thornton would do? Like, how do you think a a white person with a name like, I don't know, Mary Sue or like... 
I don't know, hillbilly redneck names. I think, you know, I'm not saying that racism doesn't exist within individual hiring practices, but I also think there's an element of classism here that perhaps people are ignoring. Right. And it's, it's not just like, oh, black versus white. It's also I mean, it's also a class thing. You can tell a lot. How with can name, you take there's... white names, replace them with black names and somehow extrapolate from but that? What, it must be class. What, what is what is a white name versus a black name? Give me a black name, Destiny. Like Tyrone or Jamal? Is Steven not a black a Nazi? Name? Not Destiny. generally. Are we going to sit here? And pre- right. I love the dishonesty. People, We're going to sit here and pretend that white people, people don't have certain Nazi. names generally and black people don't tend to have certain. How many white women do you know that are named Shaniqua or wow, Leticia? Steven, I believe in equality, okay? There's no differences. Yeah, but you also people. believe that somebody that goes to Washington High School is going to have the no. same opportunities in life as somebody that goes Steven. to like St. Louis, the Pope Steven. fucking the 23rd. I'm hearing a lot of problematic uh, rhetoric coming out oh, of you. I that love the memory. Oof, when we backed into a corner that we can't respond Steven. with. Better pull out our memes, boys. It's <laughs> problematic. Does anyone You're else here sure. like Lake Hekistan? <laughs> I don't believe there is any such Anyone else here like Pee the Frog, right, guys? I, I want to <laughs> jump in here for two seconds. Anyone I, else in I, here I short, boys? Anybody Steven, else need, to, anyone else need their black. booster seat on, here guys, to uh, stay even in this conversation? Like, I mean, Destiny's right. Remember earlier when Destiny said no black people have the name Steven? I remember when Destiny said that. I... Sorry, I've let this go to shit. I hope you're enjoying this on your Sunday evening I anyways, guys. I, I do <laughs> I do want to mention, though, I, I have a question about the name thing, because this does happen in a lot of cases. What about in higher learning? You had that gentleman, and this is a story that many of us know about, easily Googleable, where he kept repeatedly entering his poetry to be accepted, to be published, to be published, to be published, and he could not get it published until he changed his name to an Asian name because then he was suddenly within a criteria of like diversity hiring. So within the arts, within other fields, you certainly see this as well. And this is just a natural thing that exists in the world. It is certainly being pushed uh, by leftist agendas who want to get rid of whites. And right now our culture is currently pushing against any sort of agenda to uh, against or being prejudiced towards minorities. That is not a popular trend in the culture at all it's pushing the opposite way to be prejudiced towards whites even if that is still happening to so, an extent once again your evidence for this is a single data point why you no, just man, no. cited it's... one single study i cited about... one of the most comprehensive studies from the national bureau of economics research called are emily and greg more employable than lakeisha and jamal the study is kind of old but it has been one of the most comprehensive studies they did thousands of applications on this to see whether or not a... what okay well then how, how Stephen, let it? me cite the law there's diversity hiring in canada for all government jobs if i'm a woman or someone who is black or asian or whatever i am more likely to get a job in the military or police force or in education that is the freaking law so beyond just social prejudices we have it as a legal prejudice against whites hmm. true and no, also nothing. in the well, I, well, I don't I mean, the, the, the goal behind affirmative action policies is that usually they try to open up positions or they try to find ways to help groups that have been disproportionately impacted by impacted by past law. And generally, white people don't seem to be hurt by this very much. That's why we're not having a discussion right now about how all of the white communities are being destroyed and all of white is uh, the white hood or whatever white people are being thrown into poverty as a result of these horrible, atrocious affirmative action programs. Like you, you can you can cite me all the one off things you want or like, well, the law says this thing, but you can't find me these communities of white people that are being destroyed by criminal justice systems or are being destroyed <laughs> by, you know, failing education <laughs> systems or fucked up cities like you just can't find it. I love how you say that it's the criminal justice system. Like, black people commit crime, black people go to jail. It's the criminal justice system. No, maybe if there was, maybe there's a culture of responsibility. And, I mean, uh, like, if you look at reported rates for marijuana use, there are plenty of age groups. I think in every age group, except for like two or three, like five year chunks, white people report higher use of marijuana than black people do. But black people are like twice as likely to be locked yeah, up for yeah, it. Yeah, that's because there's more violent crime. That's because there's more violent crime in black neighborhoods. Okay, you, you so the way that you get locked up for it because the police have to be there. I don't know if you've ever been to Chicago, Stephen, but there's a lot of marijuana usage where I am in the suburbs. Not a lot of gang killings, not a lot of rape. You go a little bit east, and there's a lot of that stuff. It makes sense why the police goes over there. These, you know, you can all day long. You want to pretend that at once there's no differences between people. We're all equal. They, oh, you know, they're so poor. They, you know, whatever. Blah blah blah. But at the same time, 
there's black names at the same time you know you can't have it all no i don't want to have it always i've never you, you always know. try to present this as the most hyperbolic you know. thing possible it believe it or not it is simultaneously possible to recognize that there are problems in the black community some of them maybe even belonging to black people and black cultures themselves while also recognizing that black people have disproportionately faced really fucked up things in their history in america that other white people haven't you can simultaneously recognize both of these positions and be just fine what what are some, Steve? And I'm just curious. Yeah. What would what? you say are some black cultural uh, problems? Name some for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, black people's relationship right? to the police is is a, is pretty fucking dire at the moment. I would say, right? Maybe well, they should do stop doing I mean, crimes. In, in no, that, that was context, so enlightened, dude. From, from just stop doing black crimes, people, dude. Or from black people to the police. What? I, I said, in what context? You know, we were talking like black cultural problems. I just want to hear you name a few. Do you mean their relationship with the police, as in? The police are treating them badly or black people are responding badly to the police? I would say it's probably a combination of both. But a lot of this roots out of, uh, roots from the problems of, of police legitimately fucking up black people and earlier in the 50s and 60s and shit, right? A lot of it, a lot of culture is reactionary to other problems. That's just goofy, man. Nobody who is born, nobody's 20 years old today knows police brutality from the 1950s. You no, but they're the literal police. parents oh, and grandparents do, dude. Racism, that doesn't excuse. And by the way, it's, it's not like it's just it's just like communities here that haven't been working. Certain people have been failing for thousands of years. And to write that off is like, oh, well, it's just because they haven't been given enough money or programs, I think is, is a little bit ridiculous. You know, it's, it's kind of. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That but paying them all a thousand dollars to ship them back to Africa. That's a that's a very no, realistic I problem know right there. Talking about that. OK, who's talking who, about who shipping them back to Africa. All right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Wait, wait, no, Steve, Steve, who raised that point? I didn't hear that once during this. <laughs> yeah, right. Isn't that isn't that part of the big uh, meme for you building your white ethno state? Is you have to ship no, some of these people back no to the country. Steve. Wait, so how, how do you how do you deal with it right now? How do you deal with all the Hispanic, all those evil brown and black people in the United States right now? Dealing with the what are you talking about, wacky? Steve. You want Nobody's a white super? I'm sorry, people. I thought you mentioned a white super majority in the United States earlier. Did you not? Yeah, yeah, by uh, exactly by raising birth rates, by having families again. So how do you keep Hispanic and black people from having kids and and make Whoa, white people have more kids? Nobody's talking about. I'm that. asking Nobody's how you do it. No, I want you to talk this, about it. How do you do it? How do you fix we're it? We're not we're not trying to stop people from having babies. We want the majority in the country to start having kids again, and it's it's because their birth rate is so low that their population hasn't been maintained. Do you think, by, by the way, Stephen, do you think it's been like an accident that the population of whites in the country went from 90% to 67% in 50 years? You think that was an accident? It was, and yeah. For us, it kind of was, yeah, want sure. To move in the opposite direction, we're villains for that? You are the ones that want to push this artificial, this artificial transformation unnatural transformation of our country it's very natural what that. it's insanely natural it's just immigration so you're the one who's talking people, about arbitrarily restricting natural. certain people to coming to the country you're the definition of arbitrary it's hardly, it's hardly arbitrary to say the people from broken non-states from failed states shouldn't come into our country hey syria you can't come in here you call that arbitrary when when 20 percent of their people support isis i don't think so i mean syria is a refugee case do you want to talk about refugees or immigrants or do you just mix all these groups oh, together oh, okay you know Let's take let's take Mexico, for example, where south of certain districts, it's lawless. You have no government. The cartels run the country. So, yeah, I mean, you could take Mexico, El Salvador, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Africa. What Italy, legislation you know, or policies? One, what one. legislation or policies are Mexicans pushing in the United States that are causing it to turn into Mexico? What is 1965? No, I want to know what policies Mexicans have yeah, come sure, to the United sure. States the, and proposed and supported that are turning us into Mexico. The, it's not Mexicans doing it. It's a, it's a certain group of rootless transnational elites. The Hart Seller Act, which pushed certain provisions, it eliminated the national origins quota. It said that it allowed chain migration so that people that are families of immigrants can come here. That was deliberate. And, and again, you you put the burden of proof on us to end your program to transform Wait, our Wait, this wasn't so, your program. This was or this wasn't our all program. Right, this was guys, okay. the white men have taken over the chat. This is absolutely disgusting. It is bigoted. I've had enough of white men running this stream. So uh, we are going to bring in some minority voices for about two seconds here. Theron, did you want to jump in and comment on any of the autistic screeching you've heard for the last <laughs> 30 minutes? <laughs> Well, every time I, I have a moment to jump in to comment on a topic, we've already moved on to another another topic. I still have some thoughts on um, the it's okay to be white thing. So that wow, was a while ago. <laughs> I know. That's a I know. <laughs> Missed that train. You guys are so heated, and I and I I guess I'm not assertive, assertive enough to just jump in and say everyone shut up. But 
Um, I is it worth going back on that? Otherwise, we can just carry on, and I'll just comment on something if I have a thought on any new. No, 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 no. I'm okay with going bring back. Bring up a new point. Bring up something new. Yeah. Oh, something completely new. Oh, whatever you want. Whatever you want. Uh, everyone, okay, okay. this well, is a diverse stream. Everyone is allowed to bring in new opinions. Everyone's allowed to talk. No, I just, I wanted to comment on the it's okay to be white thing because it dovetails into a larger point that I have. So that was put up on university campuses, right? Yes, uh, well, all over the place. Okay, well, the thing is that we all know that uh, anti-white sentiments are prevailing on campus. I mean, that is just obvious. Uh, so I think that makes a lot of sense to put uh, stuff like that, like it's okay to be white signs up on university campuses. And I think the thing with the mainstream media and, and leftists is that they just immediately interpret as the worst possible interpretation of, oh, this is Nazi propaganda. And that doesn't mean that there couldn't be subtext uh, ever. Certainly there could be some subtext, subtext, but I still think it's still important to employ the principle of charity and to interpret uh, statements, the, to use the best plausible interpretation of a statement or argument when conversing with someone else. And that's a problem on both sides. I think that's a problem with the right and a problem with the left when dealing with each other is that they, that they don't employ the principle of charity towards one right, another. So yeah. like Nick Same. and Steven, everything is translated in the worst possible yes. uh, translation of the way. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. English, example, spaghetti. I, that's my second language. I'm just so, for so, for example, when when, <laughs> when Stephen said black names, obviously he didn't mean names that are inherently black. Obviously, he <laughs> meant <laughs> names that are names that are predominantly associated or are mostly assigned to people who are black. That is the most that is the most reasonable, the the best, strongest, plausible interpretation. Uh, so that's not fair, right? That is not charitable. Um, and then I'm sure Steve said a bunch of things towards Nick that was not uh, really very charitable towards Nick, though I right. can't think of one right now. Well, this is this is the nature of debate these days. It's funny, it's entertaining, and it is helpful to debate. And when the opponent in a debate is not charitable with you, why be charitable with them is what it ultimately comes down to. Uh, it's not necessarily the most <laughs> radical centrist most reasonable way of approaching things but it is the world we live in and it is the state of debate that we are in now it's gotten to extremes where of course you have for example the antifa holding up that we support pedos no pedo bashing thing where they literally dropped that immediately after according to some articles and interpreting that the wrong way uh has really destroyed any sort of argument or actually attacking their actual points but i mean with the current way that the left is treating the right it is just as devolved how do we fix this guys let's let's end this stream on a nice point where where is some common ground that you lads can find uh mm. let's go to steven and nick since you guys have been at each other's throats any well, common ground you i can mean find? people like steven need to be thrown in jail okay these these subversives well no nah, we're, we're i'm not even jewish dude moment. why would you say that fuck the problem why why are you reading into it you hear like <laughs> People ruling the country, and then you think Jew? Are you anti? -Semitic? The transnational. I know, dude. I watched all the mouthy Jewish Buddha videos. I know who those transnationalist elites are. I got my well, eyes on that them. That went well. You are an anti-Semite, okay? But here's where we can find. I'm just a realist, ground. dude. Here's where we can find some common ground. People like Stephen have to be held responsible for the fact that they are pushing policies that are transformative, and the natural order continues to be perverted. And I think if we could argue from that axiom where Stephen has to justify millions of people coming here, instead of me having to justify why we don't take millions of people, I think that's a, a productive way to change the conversation because it happens to be the reality of the situation. Can I just jump in? Sure. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I need to take issue. Yeah. I need to take issue with uh, Nick's uh, constant use of the term natural order because I think it's a complete misnomer. I think it's maybe in your mind, religious order or traditional order or cultural order. It's not natural order. I don't think you understand nature and biodiversity if you want to equate natural order with whatever you're talking about because uh, nature is actually uh, allows for a lot of variation. And of, course, kind there of, are, of course there are trends. Of course there are trends. Of course women are uh, 
on average predisposed to want to have children, but that doesn't mean that nature doesn't allow for some women who are predisposed to probably hate to have children and would probably be better off not having children. This whole idea that there is this, uh, this order ordained by nature, in your case, God, uh, onto humans is just fallacious. The, the, the reality of the situation is that nature is constantly in flux, that the environment is constantly in flux and that we're constantly adapting. So the natural order is constantly changing. It's just religious order. Please stop equating your understanding of what humans should be with nature. Well, you're one to lecture on naturalism, but the, the natural order of things, <laughs> we all understand what that means. And, and up until very recently, we all understood what that means. Until what, is, what, is, what are you talking about? You're someone to talk. Because yeah, you're well, a trans that, degenerate is what he's saying. Lifestyle. Because you're a degenerate. You are living a lifestyle. You are making choices that are unnatural. <laughs> And no, uh, that's not me saying that. That's not. That is. That can is you, can God please, saying please, that. Please, uh, no, 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 no. No, please. Absolutely, that's complete bullshit. Okay. The, uh, the idea that, that that nature doesn't allow for variation. Where do you see? Where do you see oh, gender oh, reassignment okay. surgeries in the animal kingdom? Where do you see that's, like little can, can kangaroos we not, can we not operating this, on each can other? Can we not make this about me? Well, yeah, like, I mean, you, because you, you're you someone to talk about this. Hey, no, you brought no, yourself that's an hominem. You That's brought, an you're so, oh, okay. well, you I was talking about that, your ideas. I was talking obviously. about your ideas, and then you made it about my well, gender. Well, we know we know why you take issue with this natural order. No, we know I'm, why not, this... I'm not. I'm not even. I'm not talking about the whole trans thing. I'm talking about. I'm relating this to like women wanting to or not wanting to have kids. Well, and I wasn't then, even thinking about well, well, but the, the that's just like that's just like that. That is just perfect example of an ad hominem. Fair ad hominem. enough, fair enough. But then with regard to women, the the exception proves the rule. Of course you can have women that are working. Of course you have anomalies, Catherine the Great, Joan of Arc, Elizabeth, Victoria. We can have exceptions, but the exceptions prove the rule. I mean, that's the whole point. I mean, you wouldn't say, for example, that because you have uh, an apple. Yes, well, that that's why I'm saying. Example, but, by some freak example, an apple is blue. You wouldn't say that apples come in red, that's green, why I'm and blue. That natural order allows for variation. You just proved my point. You no, have but, you but have no, an no, idea no. in your mind of mm. religious order. You have an no, idea in your mind of cultural order. Well, I mean, order. I I don't see eye to eye with Nick on everything, but I don't think it's necessarily him inserting religion into this to say that the natural order is for people to be fit, forming pair bonds and having children. No, even if we accept that people, if people, mm. some people, individuals may not want to do that, it is undisputably the natural order for people to no. Make, you're talking. Have children you, and raise you guys them. are talking about two different things. You're talking about yeah. the natural order as exists as a scientific fact. Nick is asserting that it is a philosophical ought. These are two gaps that most well, I mean, people it's, generally. It's both. No, no, no. It's it's not, it's not it's both. It's not both. both. Sure Unless you're is. Sam Harris, it's not both. Um, you, you cannot bridge the fact that some things exist in the world si of, of science and they all of a sudden become biological imperatives. We spend plenty of time in our daily lives. We are talking to each other on video screens using computers to, to, to communicate with one another, okay? We do a lot of things that can't be directly tied to our biological imperatives. Um, that generally... Is, that's ridiculous. Right, but that doesn't... But it's not... I, well, I mean, if you don't... Do you hunt for your food, Nick? Have you gone out hunting recently? Uh, of course it's different. Exactly, you don't. So you do not no, believe no, 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 in no. your... <laughs> No, no, no. But in principle, well, and we can talk about Ted Kaczynski and if we should even be doing all of this. But besides the point, we're using tools. We're using tools. But the fundamental reality, the what, do you use tools to kill your food? Well, this is a tool. Uh, the the market process, the civilization, can be considered a, a sociological tool. Of course, I mean that's a, a fallacious argument that I don't think anybody thinks is relevant to the conversation. You know, to to equate anarcho primitivism to using your biological limitations to govern your decision making you don't think anybody equates those two except no. for you well Here's nobody sure. nobody in society Here's that talks difference. about morals or all ethics all right, all right, all right you two you two are going to take over the stream again so i'm going to give theron a chance to respond and then roaming a chance to respond here's the difference someone who is naturally so a woman who is naturally predisposed uh not to, to want to have children and probably not be a good mother and probably someone who shouldn't have children She's not someone who goes against the natural order. She is someone who is part of a natural order as a variation on that order. There's a difference between, between being an exception to the rule and uh, going against the rule and this idea of intentional, intentionality. And that's where natural order, that's where this religious thinking comes in and where the moralistic uh, uh, argumentation comes okay. in. That is exactly what Nick is talking about. 
I think he's the using, problem is he's pretty using nature. He's using nature to uh, explain his uh, religiosity, and I don't agree with that. Even if I consider myself a, a, a traditionalist uh, in many ways, in very, many ways, and I think that co our, our society should be a lot more traditional in many ways, I'm not going to use natural order to uh, to explain my point of view. Well, no one it's does. Just, Okay, here we go. Here we go. I, I think I can identify the problem. And the problem here seems to be semantics. It seems to be that, of course, Theron, you are right. Variations are part of the natural order, it, technically speaking. However, when we're speaking on just a general term of naturally, this is typically what happens. Generally speaking, I understand what Nick's point is. And generally speaking, I understand what Roaming Millennial's point is. But technically speaking, you are correct. It's but this that's is not just the over semantics. This that's is an argument over semantics. Though. This is not a no, semantics not argument. This is an it's argument not of just philosophy. Technicality, because there's a there's a very very uh, very important difference in meaning when you say someone is an exception to the natural order and someone is going against the natural order or the ordained word of God. There's a difference well, between you know, just existing as as you know a, a woman who just is naturally predisposed not to want to have children and a woman who is you know sinning against the word of god because she doesn't want to have children well i mean i don't think nick has said that in this stream that people are sinning against the word of god if they don't well I, didn't it, nick it, advocate I'm, for I'm conversion therapy for transgenders here. i'm talking about intention right but i think it, when when we think about you can't, describe, you can't ascribe intention onto nature you can't describe your yeah, mor morality onto nature you well, this, this, no this you can't natural selection does not have intention natural selection does not have intention well There's the intention no, you you in that, by, by, by. we're talking about reproduction and the intention of reproduction is to have children but that's not so how that's, we use it in society today everybody uses contraception even you yeah, don't believe that but we are talking disaster. specifically about oh. we are talking specifically about families or at least that's what my impression was when we're talking about women having families and having children maybe i've lost sight of the conversation though totally possible yeah i, I think i might be a can, little lost so the, the, what theron is the, the difference between what these two are <laughs> arguing i think okay if i can try to understand nick's point of view is nick says that there is a certain order to the natural world that this order is something that could be factually and scientifically observed and that we should do our best to preserve that order in society that's essentially nick's argument right is that a fair summary of your point it is it is natural societal and cosmic the order i'm talking about so you know you say that it's philosophical and it's also biological it's all part of a coherent system but that's just bullshit so, well, because so, the natural order can change the, the, in a thousand years in a thousand years no uh of course so the, the like, problem the problem is that nick is taking environment his environment is constantly changing and we are constantly adapting to a constantly changing environment so in a million years time what is the natural order then is or the cosmic order then is completely different from what it is now. This idea that it's this uh, platonic ideal and eternally stable thing is completely religious. Of course it's eternal. Of course, and it's been true. No, for it's the past not. Time. It's not that. completely are eternal. Are you gonna let me? Are you gonna let me finish, babe? Okay, look, of course it's eternal. Men and women are not are not in flux biologically. Like in a, maybe in a, a million years. And we'll have to ask our, our future selves in a million years if the biology has changed. But as it stands, men and women still have different brain chemistry. As it stands, men and women still have different biology. And, and biology- Of course they that, do, and I agree with you. I and agree Stephen with believes you. in comparative advantage only insofar as it extends to the marketplace. He doesn't believe in comparative advantage when it comes to the fact that women are more suited to rearing and raising children, and men I more totally suited believe to hunting, that building things i totally believe that soldiers i think if we that. i think that if we had a 100 percent equal society where there was no pressure on any sides whatsoever i think that you would see women gravitate towards some jobs more than men i totally 100 percent believe that no they would gravitate towards the home that would be the job they gravitate okay i'm sorry well because in your world no woman ever wants to work any job ever okay but no, even not, in, no, in, no, in the no, marketplace in the marketplace, if women could still work in the world where they're allowed to choose jobs, that women would probably gravitate towards some things more than others. The problem is that what Nick is trying to do is Nick is taking his observation of the natural order and he's trying to extrapolate a system of morals from that. But in society, we generally don't do this. If we have a person who is um, who, who is like, say we have somebody that's disabled, right? Somebody in a wheelchair. We don't typically say, well, naturally speaking, this is a person that needs to die. We shouldn't be providing uh, medical resources for them. We shouldn't be providing food for them because naturally speaking, somebody that can't we walk. So wouldn't be saying that that person is going against the natural exactly order, we wouldn't right? say that this right, person I mean, to, wait, 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 to, wait, wait, to address wait, wait, that we also to be fair wouldn't say that that person 
is completely normal. It's very clear that they have a disability. And if I can bring this back to, you know, the whole debate about like, you know, women and having children, it is totally fine if an individual woman doesn't want to have children and wants to focus on a career or whatever. She just doesn't want children for whatever reason. I guess that doesn't I, mean I, that. But can sorry, you acknowledge the different? Oh, sorry, I guess my point is that I feel like uh, the part like variation and the acknowledgement of human variation is slowly getting lost in this Her voice natural is order conversation me. because mm -hmm. you have to you have to acknowledge that variation natural variation and biodiversity is part of the conversation the di what what, what the difference is diversity of course but the... you know you talk about men and women and and you talk about aristotle's four causes let's talk about aristotle's four causes the last of aristotle's four causes is the final cause which means that all things that are created all things that exist have a final end they are directed towards a particular end and human beings are directed towards a particular end you know why do we have why do we have reproductive appendages hint it's in the name it's not for recreation it's not so you could do degenerate you know cosmopolitan magazine sex positions it's so that you can continue the species it's so that you can after you get married have lots of children and then they, they take care of you marriage do you think society. monogamy is part of the, the natural, natural order, order. Monogamy is part of the natural is. order? Of course. Why are men Maybe sexually attracted? Certain, why are men sexually attracted barbarous. to other women then after they're married? That's well that has nothing to do with it. They, what do you mean? That's a construct. perfectly natural biological function. Well, here, I mean, if, if it was biological, women would have multiple orifices for multiple partners, but that's just not a part but they, of it. But, I mean, they, but be, some, but some evolutionary, uh, some evolution. Society. Wait, no, 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 hold on. I'm curious because yeah, biologically no speaking, a man and a woman can be married and that man can still feel intense sexual attraction for, for other people. So why would that be unnatural to you? Shouldn't men naturally be polyamorous? No, no, because again, it's it's a difference between men having certain sexual chemistry, and the reason for that is because there are, you know, women are the selectors in terms of who carries on the genes. Women. You're not answering my question. I don't. I don't. Think Nick, Nick is making an entirely point. natural argument. I he think absolutely he, was uh, in the process <laughs> of not, making my. He's making it now. Look, he's look, telling look, you he's making look, it now. Look, but the thing, okay, ladies, the thing, men, everyone. Let's, uh, I need to wrap this stream up soon, as fun as this has been. Uh, I, I found this absolutely entertaining for my Sunday night, but I will take some final statements, some final points from everyone. I apologize for cutting you off right there. I think there were about somehow 20 people talking at once, despite there only being <laughs> six people in here. So uh, does anyone want to make any final statements, final points <laughs> to, the, to wrap up this hilarity? Uh, yeah, I, I'd love to, if I can have a minute. Excellent. Go ahead. Uh, We're a little to... short on time, so keep it fast. Uh, I, I, I will. I, I just wanted to ask the little guy, are you still suing girls on the internet? Oof, I actually am not uh, able to talk about that publicly at the moment. I'm sorry. but you'll You're hear... suing You're suing somebody? I, I can't Earth speak about that. Really? Under advice of counsel, I'm not supposed to talk about that right now. I'm sorry. You can't, you can't legally speak about it. I can't. I'm not, I shouldn't. I really shouldn't. I really shouldn't. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, that is sad. That is fucking sad. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you, too, that, uh, you know, that I've got a short minute here. Um... Are you ever going to pay that charity money you owe, or are you going to just be a snake? Well, somebody said that I that. somebody said that I call people racial slurs in StarCraft Two, and that uh that that's, image that's was not, never that's produced. Not what I'm talking about. That not image. What I'm talking about. Wait, what other thing was talked about? Uh, you wanted somebody to quote you, and you said, "If you can find me saying this, I'll pay a thousand dollars." Yeah, I think it was to like guy, calling somebody like the, the N word the in StarCraft found, or whatever. Nah, 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 the guy found the quote, the, not the StarCraft thing. Oh, the well, you can quote, quote, quote me the tweet later and tell me what it was about because I don't remember this. I'll look into it, buddy. he he found the quote and he gave it to you. And he asked you to donate that money to a British charity for midgets. Oh shit! So you owe that fucking money to them. Well, you've you better... been watching it for three months. I guess three I, months. I guess I just have a short attention span. <laughs> I, I guess you. Maybe do, you. Man. Uh, yeah, you better go ahead and shoot me that tweet again, and I'll look into it, you buddy. Need, okay. You need to pay what you owe. Yeah, you're right. <sighs> I mean, if you have I money to think hire I remember this. To sue girls on the internet, you should have the money to. Oh, pay I never that. said I was doing any of that. Oof. You said under advice of was counsel, this the you can't thing? talk about it. That's no, all. This yeah, I can't. I can't really say. I can't. You know, I'm not talking about it. I'm really sorry. I wish I could speak I, to you more about this. I'm but. not. I'm not talking about the thing where he went off on some black chick and called her an Uncle Tom. Oh, I, I remember that. Yeah, yeah Patty. that was funny stuff. Yeah. Good old That's Patty. Good stuff, Destiny. Yeah. <laughs> was that All the right, same that one that you tweeted out the uh, KKK crucifix burning picture? No, too? that was actually to a black nationalist. But yeah, that was a pretty good tweet too. I like that one. That's good stuff. I I liked it. You're the gamer gay guy, right? I thought you said we shouldn't be offended by this kind of stuff. Or does it just bother you when I say it because we disagree politically? Uh, no, I fucking love it. I, I wish you did more stuff like that. Oh, well, there you go. I try to, dude. Keep, keep an eye on my chat. I'm a pretty edgy dude. I, w I want you to be more edgy. Okay, I try. We can both wear Kekistani shirts. 
Uh, uh, I'm a little too old for that. Uh, I hit my twenties like almost chalet? a decade uh, ago. Uh, I don't know if I really want to associate with the Kekistani dudes, but you know, may, may, my kid is actually um, he's almost you, seven years old. Maybe in like a couple years he'll be old enough for the Kekistani stuff. I'll, I'll get him a shirt. All right. Uh, have you had the big conversation with him yet about whether it's morally right to fuck uh, him? It's pretty hard for me to have big conversations <laughs> about anything, my dude. <laughs> Oh, boy. Well, you know, to, to wrap it up, I mean, look, we can argue back and forth about the data. You know, we can look at the data all we want. You know it. I know it. We all know it. The natural order must prevail. And I will bludgeon women back into the home, rhetorically speaking, with the Holy Bible if I have to. And I will, rhetorically. And uh, so I'll leave it at that. I am a crusader for women and blacks and Jewish people. I want them to succeed and be happy. And that's my fight. I'm, I'm a, a social justice warrior. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Uh, anyone else like to well, wrap this up with some kind comments? I, I just kind of like what I, I was trying to uh, say to Theron is that I, whenever I talk about, you know, marriage and family and things like that, um, very often people get the sense that you're condemning the morality of people who choose to go against you. But what I would like to see is a culture where, you know, in for university, for example, I think we all kind of generally agree that university is a good choice to make, but that doesn't mean someone who chooses not to go to university is a bad or immoral person. That's what I would like to see regarding marriage and the family, that we all recognize it as a universal good, but that we don't demonize people if their personal circumstances don't point toward that way. And I, I think there is something to be said about, you know, judge not lest you be judged, just saying, Nick. No, I will. I will judge them. I will <laughs> judge them until Christ himself sits at the right hand of the father and judges them. No, Ooh, I'm, I'm don't hold but, your breath for that but one it's true. Oh. but it's um but it's true i mean it, it's it's a moral good too and uh you know I, I don't judge people if they're in a personal circumstance where they can't um where they have to work but i just think societally it's just better for everybody i don't know why everybody wants to live in rebellion against what they know is natural that's why people get so defensive because they know they're living in rebellion Nick's right. sweater is lovely, but uh, gotta gotta stop hogging the cam. Any anything right. from Stephen? No bullshit or Theron. Any anything yeah. burning in your gut that you gotta get out? I'm just kind of yeah, curious. I, I just have one comment, one or actually just one question. Or she Theron can go first if you wanted to, or roaming. No, go ahead, go shout out. Oh I, no, I was just curious, Lauren. I'm curious for you because it's always hard to pin down your beliefs because you like to dance the line so much. Do you think that trans people are <laughs> unnatural degenerates? Yeah, is that a yes or no? I'm curious. <laughs> Trans people are unnatural degenerates. Are trans I people not, unnatural uh, degenerates? I don't, I wouldn't say degenerate. I uh, have <laughs> that's, all I, that's all I needed. That's all I wanted to know. People, that's all I wanted no, to know. No, I, I don't believe in the idea that you can change your gender, no. Okay. That's all I wanted. No. <laughs> well, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and chime in there on that awkward moment. Uh, first of all, I love the fact that Brightside Bob or Medicare's picture has been up for like the last half hour on the stream. That's pretty awesome. Those three gay guys are really rocking out. Um, <laughs> thank you everyone for coming on and thanks uh, Lauren for inviting me. Last thing I'll say is uh, Richard Spencer watches my videos. He tweets them. Uh, MAGA 2020. It's okay to be white. What? Okay. All right. Well, this was the worst, guys. Thank you so much. This started out so civil. Uh, I had so much promise. Then I haven't. I haven't happened. done something yet. Are you signing? All right. All right. You get one second. You get one minute. I just wanna. I just wanna go drink wine and cry about not having children. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, like, it's kind of funny to me because, like, which one of you ladies are? Which one of any of you are are engaged? Oh, uh, well, those that's biological savage. imperatives. This Ooh. is getting real personal. This stream real is Real personal after real, grilling her on her unnatural guys. degeneracy? Now it's personal? I'm just, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just curious because, like, uh, I'm engaged. I'm soon to get married. And uh, I'm probably going to have children in the next two years. This degenerate that I am, you know, I guess that my, I'm just a living example of the fact that um, we all have some natural variation in us. Uh, that and that there's not like this platonic ideal of of what people should be in every point in time until the end of time um, that someone can have this variation here but still satisfy all the other criteria of the natural order um, I can't wait to be a mother and I think I'll be a great mother and fuck you Nick 
This can I just so a quick not... comment? Can I? I appreciate the conversation. Oh, I really do. I love you all have, of you, even you Nick. Have, all right. Except for Mr. Medica, I hate you. But and no bullshit. But I Lauren, you. yeah, Lauren, Nick, uh, and cool. Jeroming, even maybe. Yeah, I appreciate the conversation. No, I do enjoy I also, talking I to you guys. Wanna, I, and, I also yeah. want to apologize. I also want to apologize. <laughs> I also want to apologize to uh, Rowing Millennial for going so hard and heat it up with you because I actually really like you and I think you're really cool. Uh, even if I'm like frustrated about a few things and i'm no, sorry about that no worries it's it's spicy conversation a anytime you guys want to talk again i would be down thanks for having us lord yeah thanks lauren nope. thank nope. you for having thanks, buddy me. thank you thank you for the wonderful uh awkward video on my channel this is just <laughs> wow and thank you to the chat for partaking this had so much promise but uh, i hope it was entertaining you came on this adventure with us this complete and utter shit show of a live stream be sure to check out uh, contrapoint theron meyer mr medoker no bullshit destiny roaming millennial and nick fuentes on their own channels they all had their own unique thing to contribute to this that made it entertaining uh as for the rest of you i hope you all have a wonderful Saturday night. I'm probably never going to do this again. So <laughs> savor this while you can. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Good night. All right. Have fun, guys. Wow, that right. was the worst. Right. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think we did okay, right? Do you think? Do you think we did okay ish? I had a lot. Of, I noticed I had a lot of centrists there, um, defending my. Point. <laughs> Thanks for trying, Stephen. But now five thousand of us are dumber and have brain cancer. De feels. Holy shit. Destiny, oh. I don't even know how you can have any shred of composure during these conversations. Keep it up, buddy. Chat, you guys are hilarious. Less than three. G-O-D-S-T-I-N-Y less than three. I am peak liberal of 2017, according to Easiest this. one v five of your life. This Croatian four chan poster. Wow. <clears throat> Destiny hits liberalism pretty close to the center. Thanks. This thread is being rated by the cold of destiny. How many of you fucking retards spam these poll threads? I feel like there's like two of you in chat that do it constantly. You did well in that boss fight, my dude. Thanks. Destiny single-handedly beating six alt-riders at once. This is fucking retarded. Easy clap in five, four, three, two, one. Why do they call Destiny Shorty's five seven? Um, I am five eight. Excuse me. <laughs> Any closing statements frothing at the mouth for a chance to insult their god destiny? How many of you Great guys are job, in here? Destiny. Clap Holy when you shit. Call knobs, no dumbass, I literally fell out of my chair. Laughing, keep up the ten. Tens, clappa. I try, my dudes. Thanks for the donations, guys. I love you. This is so good. Your donations on top of the Soros checks I'm getting to push this. It's not even Soros. Wait, is Soros Jewish? Soros and the other Jews. To, you to subvert Western park, society. GG easy clap a bonus meme. There are no blacks named Steven. Bonus bonus meme. Natural cosmic order gashigasm. The issue with Destiny is that he's so autistic he knows a lot of random studies and he uses them to shut down discourse. <laughs> I thought the I should have remembered. I guess I'll remember it for next time. It was the 2003 Steven National the Bureau of Economics. Easy clap. Um, this is like such a popular study. I've never heard like somebody like challenge it before. Um, it was from the National Bureau of Economics Research called, Are Emily and Greg More Employable Than Lakeisha and Jamal? To be fair, it's a little dated. It's like 2003, I think, but, um, the results were pretty, 
inarguable. It's been replicated? Yeah, I, I've heard that. I need to go and look up more recent replications. Thank you for doing what you did, Stephen. Ye boy in chat, please. I don't agree with Destiny on anything, but he does win every debate against people who fundamentally don't discard equality as something of value. That's very true. Um, it's more difficult to argue with genuine, like, Nazi people or genuine race realists because they're quick to discard equality. And once Great somebody is, um... Wacky Steve, by the way, Gen Yi. <laughs> Wacky Steve? He was trying to do the Trump thing. Um, hopefully he doesn't become a failure like Trump. Um, well, I guess in office, Trump as a, as a businessman, I guess, isn't necessarily a failure. Um, if somebody is willing to concede that they don't care about equality, the debate becomes much more difficult on my end because that's equality is usually something I can attack most of these people Destiny, on. Destiny, I can't believe you kept your cool during that boss rush. Good job, buddy. Thanks. He called me Wacky Steve. Can I change my Twitter name to Wacky Steve? Am I able to do that? Or will it like... How do I do that? Edit profile. Nathan God's tiny. Destiny, you're a literal fucking god for telling no BS that the conversation should be reserved for people who have actually <laughs> had sexual experiences. G -O -G I, like that, -T -I, I like that every time I went in on him, Roaming was like, real quick, she's like, that was not necessary. You don't need to do that. You don't need to insult him like that. But then as soon as Nick was like, by the way, being a transgender is a $5 degenerate, $5 she was totally fucking silent. This year. What's the, what was a Theron person's name? Hi, Destiny. When you inevitably play classic WoW, please ignore Mr. Mutan and his cronies. And instead go play on the RP servers. Everyone here would like to see you engage in intellectually heavy textual roleplay as you have done in League in the past. Um, what's her Twitter, though? Good job, buddy. Proud of you. Thanks. Oh no. Husky. Husky's gone to the Nazi side, boys. It's all over. <laughs> She's banned on Twitter? Oh. God stinny. Here's the lefty Lauren contacted. Oh, nice. Is Theron like a lay centrist or? Why is Nina doting to Sippy Destiny? sippy based god based <gasps> god over Russell based god no tears. Oh, thanks a lot, Nina. $50. I really appreciate it, buddy. Thanks. <laughs> these, these images are fucking retarded. <laughs> It was like that one movie where Jackie Chan fights 10 Lysentrists. I love it. Are there any other liberal personalities that do debates like you? Um, They do on the Chapo Trap House people, I think, right? I don't. I just don't know much about them because Michael Brooks ignored my emails. How triggered do you think? Oh, never mind. I guess he wouldn't be. Great job, buddy. Chapo is usually a left circle jerk. Oh, uh, is it kind of like the Young Turks? They seem like pretty reasonable, no? Destiny's going to get memed into being one of Pulse's favorite personalities. Yeah, I try. Missed 2,300 bits. Ironically asking oh, did if I? women should have jobs. Thanks, Desert Doge. I love you, buddy. Well, you're princess. You have to be at least 35 to run for president, my dude. 
Why do you think Lauren let that dude come into the call just to shout on you? I don't know, but I think it went okay. I think that Jim looked worse I than that. Do you think? I love for streams like these. Um, Godstein in one o nine eight seven I, six five four three two one. Godstein. I think his last dig about me having the talk with Nathan about fucking him was probably was a pretty good one. But um, I didn't have a chance to respond because Lauren started to cut us off. We could have kept going back and forth. <sighs> love you, buddy. I went with the uh, I went with the eight mile strategy there, and I just used the uh, Eminem's final rap where I just make fun of myself a bunch. <laughs> Here you go. Tell these people something they don't know about me. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Nothing feels better than being a Jewish person listening to a college student tell me I'm responsible for destroying America. This was a wild trip. Danny the Doom? Are you a woman who doesn't have a child? You degenerate fuck. I feel like Since you were- there are so many people here right now, I just want to make it clear that Pickle Mancer is a weeaboo. Nice. I feel like while you were getting heated with Nick, she kept interrupting you only when she- Oh, yeah. I wanted to go more with the Nick thing, because I feel so much more comfortable discussing philosophy with him, because, like, the, the claims that he was making for philosophy was, like, really, really, really Fuck ridiculous. Me, dude. Um, you deserve a medal for having to withstand that level of autism. Nick made me want to stick a AK through my Ethernet cable. Thanks. Um, the idea that we can take, like, natural law and turn that into, like, some kind of moral system, or, like, that's, like, a really ridiculous assertion. Like, nobody believes that. And there are so many problematic sta statements. Like, what I was asking Nick Wacky towards the Steve. end, right? Like, um, Nick was trying to advocate for a monogamous nuclear family while simultaneously saying that natural biological imperatives should dictate how we live our lives. Well, if a man wants to go and cheat on his wife, then now you need to bring in some sort of superseding moral system to guide that. And that's what Theron was getting at, but she couldn't complete the circuit. But that would have been religion. That's where his Can religion comes in. Can the chat post a link of whoever Destiny is suing? I'm a retard and can't find it. <laughs> that's, those are some memes. Um, if I could have, If I could have grilled him more on that, I think he would have had to concede that he was using religious law there, not natural, not any kind of biological imperative. I didn't even watch the stream cause I'm pretty sure the concept Jesus plus hardcore would natural kill. law. Yeah. Me, but good job, buddy. G O D S T I N Y. Wow, thanks, Machnizel. Is double O eight? I love you, buddy. Why don't women have multiple holes? I mean, they kind of do. <laughs> <laughs> wacky Steve's waving inflatable arm flailing tube man 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 my this bingo kind card of is debate almost full needs to happen weekly <laughs> oh shit Oh, we got the you are the real racist. I remember that one, right? When Nick did that. Many, You're the real racist because you think blacks are too dumb to get an ID. This legit felt like a boss fight. Bonus meme. Cosmic order. And cosmic. Oh, yeah. Wait, somebody donated before that. Fuck. Oh, the devil's Joe. Thanks, buddy. I love you guys. Wowie, nice job. Why did Contra leave? Oh, she had uh, voice lessons, I think, is what she said. C-O-S-M-I-C-O-R-D-E-R. -E Where did the $100 donation go? Wait, was there a $100 donation that I missed? Oh, I'm sorry. My dude.
Do people really not understand why you can't say no to your boss when they ask you for sex? Is this something? I have a lot more people in here now than I normally do. Is this something that I need to talk about? Why, why this option doesn't really exist or you doesn't exist in the way you penny. think it does? Thanks. I would explain it to me. Say, all right, hold on. As soon as he's clear through, I'll talk about it. One sec. Wow, Wacky Steve, you really rose to the challenge. Even though you were short on time, the Cosmic Order made sure you stood tall. Please talk with Babe again sometime. Bonus Who's meme, babe? no bullshit, air time. Good job, man. It's funny how some people in the call wait for moments to take jabs at you. And add nothing else to the conversation. Bum. Are we done? I really feel like you should ease off on that sex thing with your boss. Saying you have no choice is way too extreme in my opinion. Much easier to dismiss you than you do have a choice, but there is an uncertain possible. Well, yeah, that's kind of what we get at, though. But it is a very extreme thing hey that there, people need to understand. Steve, how can you live with yourself knowing that you're going against the natural order of things by being shorter than the average male height? Also, why are you so racist for assuming <coughs> that white people can't have the name Tyrone? <coughs> What a bunch of cucks. They keep saying transnational globalists because they are too cowardly to name Harkden. I'll explain the, the, the sex thing, saying no to your boss as soon as you This is a tax-free donation. It's not, though. Is that it? Best anniversary gift ever. Do you think you should strive to be more calm during a debate? I think I was like, I mean, that was a pretty memey debate. I think I was about as calm as I could have been. Let's be real, right? Clap a destiny, GG no re. Wow, Kinetic42, thanks for the tier points up, buddy. Fuentes talks about the JQ all the time on his streams if you watch them. Rich of him to accuse you of being an anti-Semite. Nice. Oh. Aura North, big donation coming through. That's going right into my Lord's Mobile Guild. Whew. That's going right into my castle. My peepee -pee stinky. Celebrate by playing Dwarf Fortress.
Your next hot chocolate's on me. Now, let's ruin the viewer count with League. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Wow, where's Deanna at? That's a good, that's a good idea. We'll be playing some League after this. Whew. I got the Windows version of Skype, and I, don't, I didn't know how to make it shut the fuck up. Oh my god. Is there no way to, like, mute this program? Right click. Oh, I, maybe I could mute it from the taskbar, I guess. Oh, some of the donations in... Oh, no, I can't. That's really irritating. Can you not mute it in the mixer? You I don't see it in the mixer. You literally all these retards. Get rid of it, it's retarded as fuck. Yeah, but it doesn't leak your IP, dude. Here's five. Put it towards the cancer treatment you're going to need after this. Keep it up, buddy. Yee. Click the button that shows your profile picture of the search bar on Skype. Oh, settings. Audio. Oh. No. Turn it Destiny, off. Destiny, I normally go past subbing, but holy shit, this was some of the best content I've seen from you since the StarCraft days. I wish I had your patience. Thanks, I've been working on it, my dude. Do, 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 do. Destiny, can you please get our top memers on the case? This was a good moment for you. What happened? Like, if I want to argue against a policy by... You people. You people, you know what I mean. When I want to argue against a policy by, say, Republicans Wowie. in the United States or right-leaning uh, politicians in the United States, I can point to actual legislation penned by actual congressmen and senators in Congress, and I can talk about the impacts that these things will have. So, for instance, um, attacks on women's rights to choose for an abortion or the North yeah. Carolina... Uh, is you'll find, well, look at these seven tweets that I found and, and look at the professor that I had in college. Like, how can you think that Vena these things is are lying, at all I'm the not same a type of thing? I swear. Yeah. Professors are actually more important. Again, politics oh my is God. downstream of culture. You change. Oh, the professors. The professors. The professors. Picklemancer isn't just a weeaboo, but his favorite anime is Rick and Morty. He's Pickle Rick, by the way. Picklemancer wubba lubba dub dub ha ha. Like I love more Szechuan of sauce sorry. too. Pickle boy. This is your guys' fault, not mine. BTW, ISNT, it about now that Athene's logic nation should be on CNN and BBC? He did say one year in your last debate, so MBY, it's about time to have a follow up with him. Also, no bullshit is a retard. Good content, homie. I try my best to make good content. Who was the centrist girl in that call? Was it supposed to be a roaming millennial? <laughs> I actually don't know. Do 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 do. You earned friend. I like how the Fuentes dude talks about affirmative action fucking over white people while he was able to easily be changed universities. Also another meme is I'm pretty sure that guy said he was Hispanic when you two talked the first time. I was gonna donate a dollar for every point no bullshit made but I can't donate zero dollars. Feels bad, man. He didn't say anything ever. Why was no bullshit even there? I have no idea. Maybe they're gonna start dating. <laughs> oh, shit. X70 Godsteiny combo, or I will DDoS this wacky stream dank meme sweatsteiny Godsteiny.
Thank you Destiny. I was headed down the anti-SJW path and can now imagine myself having hopped on the alt-right train if I hadn't found your videos. You're entertaining and nuanced and seem to promote data-backed positions. Appreciate ya. I like this meme. Thanks, guys. Make me feel like a big guy. Well, wow. rip Lauren and Thurin's friendship. Good job throwing that grenade in there. Excellent work, buddy. <laughs> what is this? Destiny, you honestly make the world a better place. P.S. Desti Senpei. Aw, thanks, buddy. You can't call me Big Boss, because that means I eventually turn evil. Five dollars fee to get a state ID spending it here instead. Are you debating? No, well, yeah, I'm never going to be talking politics. What do you want? Oh, alright. Good. Just gonna say we can play in like, PUBG. yeah, 30 minutes if you want, okay? Alright, good luck. Bye. That was the world's weirdest game of League I've ever seen. That was the Dark Souls of debates. Should have asked Nick about anal, though. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I played against Jesse the other day. He's a Torb one trick. Wow, he's been playing Torb for a long time then. Fist me, daddy. Ye boy. We're almost done, guys. I'm so sorry. Wowie. Four more to go. <clears throat> Good memes didn't expect them to bring up Asians. Right wingers usually love those guys. Do, 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 do. Wanna hear a joke? No bullshit. What a waste of fucking time. Either get back to work or play Wolfenstein over Russell. <laughs> Was that Harkton? You got one more to go, boys. Oh, not safe for work. Oh, Do you think that people were confusing not being able to say no with that can't say no? So they must say yes. Am I confusing, I? Nice. <clears throat> okay, so typically when two people... Oh, wait, I didn't While refresh. everyone oh. is here, twitter.com slash trainrexTV. Oh, sorry, hold on. There's like 10 more now. <laughs> My bad. Wow, thanks for subbing. I'm not even sure what that just was. I lost track of them. Fuck. Destiny just cut them off? That sounds rude as fuck. Can 
you give us elevator music while people give you shekels? Can't you mute um, sound while I'm talking? No, because people get hella ass pain if I do that. <laughs> oh no, I can't even play music because this thing like fucks with it. Chat, how mad are you that the donations are still coming? the piano i don't have anything to play okay i have to restrict the amount of piano i play before you guys realize i can't actually play that much shit <laughs> i have to i have to be constantly vigilant that i only play so much on stream if you can't deny sex with your boss does that mean mr mouton can't deny sex with destiny that's a conversation on um on having sex with fans that, that is an interesting conversation you can make arguments there bludgeon women back into their place rhetorically lure use When Lauren had to water down your question answer about trans. Bonus meme, I turned out fine. <laughs> that was so funny that she couldn't just say yes or no. Do you think trans people are unnatural degenerates? Well, I wouldn't say degenerates. <laughs> that was a Mike Spam question, by the way. Mike Spam was the one that made me ask that, so you can congr congratulate him on that one. Man, Jim 81 Jim was really rude to you. Also, Palestine exists. Oh, thanks for another $50, Arrow North. It's also going into my Lord's Mobile Guild. Just to keep you annoyed and unable to tell chat things, Nathan Pepe. I would have doubled down and called that girl an Uncle Tom again when Jim asked you. <laughs> oh, I thought about it. But, now nah, let's... You transgenders aren't natural. BRB gonna get off my computer How could you even say that trans people aren't McDonald's. natural? Um, trans people aren't, probably aren't natural. Um, and I would even argue that gay people aren't natural either. But I can give you a more nuanced answer to that in a second, and I can tell you why it bothers people when people make those statements. And it's totally valid to be bothered by those statements. Get, as soon as these are done, I can M answer Daddy, that. buttery bands, my man. Keep it up. P.S. How do I get cute Asian girls to play video games with me? I don't know, you just gotta believe in yourself, my dude. Can't you just go over your boss's head to a general manager or HR department and complain to them about what he is asking from you? If it was your word versus theirs, wouldn't the woman be believed? Great debate. Good job out there. Not necessarily, but um, we can talk about that. Oof, once these are done, I might start muting these boys. Whew. Destiny Metacore destroyed you in that debate, Pepe. Who was that turd that entered the debate late? He should up the show quick. Oh, 
Oh, Jim, Mr. Medicare. He just makes short jokes against me all the time. I don't know why. He seems really mad about me. He has to bring me up, um, like, every other month. He'll just start, like, subtweeting me or some shit. This got you a 49 times Godstiny combo? Wait, Policies what? Policies are explicitly <sighs> racist, and not just against whites, but also against Asians. So I mean, like, write a letter to the totally Supreme Court, dude. I don't want to argue their case against you. I mean, like, in North Carolina, it was very, very clearly targeted towards black people. The state legislature requested that data by racial breakdown so hot. in order to My disallow brain the very specific to go against dates the that black people voted and the very specific types of ID that black people in one of her used orbices. to vote and to close very specific black majority voting booths, right? I know that for people like you, for the enlightened centrist, if it's not not there in the letter of the law, you don't think that it's racist, but for the rest of us that have to deal with the pragmatic implementation of policy Barrett in the Lull real world, five, these things four, end up three, being pretty two, fucking one. racist. Destiny Holy play shit, Undertale. that was so rude. Ooh. Okay, maybe we did need to tone it down a little bit. <clears throat> I want to impregnate Lauren Southern Datgeoff. Wow, good job, Fancy Sloth. Good contribution. <sighs> Violent speed momentum. <laughs> Anything I say in here is more important Bye. than legislation because this is culturally transmitted. Good players use three fingers. Thanks for whatever that just was. Fuck, dude. Are we... Are we almost done? More Asian privilege than I know what to do with. Okay, I'm going to start muting these, okay? So they'll appear on stream with the noise, but they won't be read out loud, okay? Lead Nathand. Okay, um, let me talk about a couple things real quickly. Okay, so the consent issue with bosses. So most reasonable people acknowledge that your ability to exercise... Um, oh, God, I fucking hate better Twitch TV. How do I get out of this? Oh, okay, um, sorry. I don't hate... That was actually a Twitch thing. Okay, so the um, the issue with... Um, the issue with um, consent, right... When people make decisions in real life, people um, people don't usually make decisions in a vacuum. This is something that's very, very, very important to recognize because all of our decisions are very heavily weighted um, based on potential outcomes, on our experience going into things, um, et cetera, et cetera, right? This is kind of like a general thing, right? So if we raise our focus just to sexual relationships, right, or, or, or um, propositions for sexual relationships or romantic relationships, right, one problem that you run into is there is consent issues when you have somebody that's in a position of power over somebody else when they proposition them for a romantic How's relationship. How's your day been, Destiny? Um, okay, fuck, I don't know why that got read. Um, so, for instance, let me give you an example. Let's say that you're working at a job, okay? And I can give you three different examples, okay? But we'll do this one first. Let's say that you're working at a job and you are, um, and you're up for a promotion, okay? And your boss is going to be playing a major role in determining whether or not you get promoted, right? Obviously, it's your boss. You, you know, a lot of direct feedback on your work performance. Let's say that in the process of this promotion, let's say that your boss comes up to you and is like, hey, do you want to go out and get drinks sometime, right? So in a vacuum, 
this is not rapey. It's, there's no problem with it. He's just asking you if you want to go and get drinks, right? A very naive analysis of the situation would lead us to believe that, well, the person can definitely say no. The person could say yes if they're interested. Um, there's no there's no issue here. There's no consent problem. Nothing is wrong with the boss propositioning the employee. But the problem is that the way that it plays out in real life is your ability to make a decision that respects your autonomy is compromised because you don't know what's reliant on you saying yes. And that's why, like, True consent, like, it is possible that consensual relationships can occur when the power dynamics are really fucked, but it's impossible from an outside party to ever determine if that's what's happening. That's the problem, you know? So, if you say no to your boss, you don't actually know if you're going to face future repercussions because you said no to him. Let's say that the yeah. boss asks you if you want to engage in a sexual relationship or a romantic relationship, and you say no, and then you're passed over for that promotion, right? Well, now you don't actually know. You know, like, well, fuck, did I get passed over that promotion because I said no to my boss? Or was it for some other reason, right? Your ability to consent is, like, really compromised there. Um, it's student student teacher relationships are discouraged for the same reason so you have to hand in a paper and your grade is very important to your gpa or whether or not you pass and the teacher probably knows this right if a teacher propositions a student for a romantic relationship do you want to go out for drinks do you want to come over to my place and watch netflix do you want to do some shit well can the student really say yes or no there like your, your ability to consent is very hazy at this point because the student doesn't really know what's on the line this person is in a position Unmute robot lady over russell this person is in, is in a position where they can um, exercise some form of power over me my ability to truly say yes or no here is is very iffy does that make sense why um this is why typically we discourage people approaching um approaching people romantically when they're in a massive position of power over the other person like direct positions of power you know I think that you can just say no people might also look at the Milgram experiment and say any moral person would refuse to torture another person they don't seem to have an appreciation for the actual difficulty of being a moral hero oh sure Can you explain why going to HR isn't always a solution to this sort of things? Like, how are people like Weinstein able to get away with this sort of thing for so long? So the problem is that, like, um, um, okay, so I have to go, like, anecdotal here. Um, oh, I can talk about the naturalistic fallacy that Nick was making, and then I can also talk about the trans thing, okay? R keep reminding me of these, and I'll talk about them after this, right? The problem with things like going to HR is that, like, if somebody, if a vice president or, or somebody very high up is propositioning somebody very low down, um, if you go to HR, this person is probably not going to get fired. This is kind of anecdotal corporate politics bullshit, but it's also pretty reasonable, right? Unless the higher up is being really fucking autistic with the way they're approaching, like, underlings, um, which usually they aren't, like, there's always going to be some level of plausible deniability. The, the, the the chance the chances that hr is going to side with the employee there to like fuck the vp like the vp is only getting fucked if he's acting like a total fucking retard right in, in general this probably won't happen um human resources exists generally to protect the interests of the company human resources exists to make sure that nothing is going to happen in the company that's going to make the company look bad so if you're being blatantly sexually harassed by a manager or something hr is really great in dealing with issues like this um because because sexual harassment is not good for the fucking company and they'll shit can that manager if it happens but if the relationships are more subtle or the problems present in more subtle ways um your relationship to hr and your relationship with the company everything is very hazy at that point and it becomes very difficult to tell how how that's going to play out um, please mention what happened at uber i mean you've got the weinstein shit you've got there's tons of different circumstances in real life where somebody's gone to hr and and shit hasn't panned out exactly how you want it to like it's a very awkward relationship with hr there it's very difficult to um to figure out if hr is truly representing your side or if they're going to take the side of the corporate guy who's way more connected to the company than you are um so yeah if only they had hr departments in saudi arabia um <clears throat> Oh, real fast. So the Fuentes argument. So um, Fuentes claimed to do something that um, we've never been able to do in all of human history, right? So Fuentes was, make, was, was making two, two kind of things here, okay? One is Fuentes um, is making observations of how nature typically plays out in nature, of how biology plays out in nature, of like natural human activity, right? These observations are 100% valid. Um, for instance, women tend to be weaker than men. They have a smaller neuromuscular system and their, their muscles themselves are smaller, um, usually less O2 capacity. Um, more parts of their body are dedicated to things like childbearing, um, you know, stuff stuff like this exists um, that that um, that 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 make women more geared towards like bearing bearing children, right? These are natural observations that are just one hundred percent true. That you can't really deny these things. Um, 
on a bell curve, on, on average, any man will be able to defeat any woman in, in single armed combat or unarmed combat, you know, shit like this, right? These are, these are observations that we can make pretty naturally. Uh, men generally want to fuck women. Um, I don't know if women are normally more guarded. I don't know if that would play out that way in the natural world or if that's like a societal thing. But um, yeah, we can make these natural observations, right? Now, again, making these natural uh, making these natural conversation uh, natural observations. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, th these are totally fine things to make. The problem that you run into is that what Nick was trying to do is he was trying to take these natural these natural observations and he was trying to turn that from a scientific is into a philosophical ought. Right. So one of the things that we can get from philosophy um, and something that can only come from philosophy is what ought we do in society. So when you talk about oughts, you're talking about how should people act? What is morally good? What is morally bad um these are questions that we get from philosophy so no serious person looks to the natural world to find our philosophical oughts because it's just you run into a i mean you can do it but you're in a very extremist world at that point so here are some things that i could extrapolate from natural oughts that i don't think fuentes would would agree with some of these you can even look at as personal attacks um weak people right people that can't bench or squat a certain weight people that aren't um, capable of enduring physical combat probably shouldn't have a place in society because if another person of, of, of um larger stature than them were to challenge them to a fight, they would just kick their ass. They would take their shit. They would take their mates or whatever, right? Th these are things that we can find from natural law, right? Bigger people might beat up smaller people because they want to steal their shit. Well, why don't we do this? We don't do this because because we don't go by natural law when we, when we determine what is ethically permissible in society, right? Or for instance, women might be predisposed towards certain types of work, but in society today, we Protect, we, we generally want people to choose to do what makes them the most happy, you know? In, in the natural world, usually people's decisions are all geared around survival. What do I need to do to, to optimize my survival? You know, I need to hunt and gather for food. I need to have a certain number of children. I need to move into certain places. Today, we tend to optimize for happiness. We don't optimize for survival. Um, this is why things like contraceptives fly right in the face of what Nick was talking about. Nick talks about how reproduction exists to have, to have children, not for any kind of degenerate pleasure. Well, that's not how we treat it today in society. In society today, we use reproduction, um, we use our reproductive organs all the time for pleasurable activity. In fact, that's the predominant use of it. We don't masturbate because we, um, we're trying to make kids, and oftentimes we're not fucking people um, because we're trying to have kids. We've got plenty of tools to circumvent that. Um, People that have uh, people that are born as type one diabetics naturally we should let these people just rot and die right we don't want to pass their um, if there's a genetic predisposition towards type one diabetes we don't want to spread this in through society or things like Huntington's or things like Parkinson's or the different types of cancers or or ASD or Down syndrome right there's plenty of diseases that are genetic and and the natural law would dictate that we leave these people to die but in society these we haven't made these decisions we make different decisions that we want to optimize for the maximum happiness experienced by society right I could go on and on and on and on about this right it's a really really ridiculous assertion to say that our morals should come from natural law. And one of the problems that Nick ran into when I posed the, the male cheating question is what Nick revealed in his own thinking was that Nick didn't reveal, uh, didn't agree with natural law. By the way, nobody does, right? Unless you're literally like a shredded fucking dude who like lives off the fucking land and is ready to go like 100% on his own with his family, you probably don't believe in natural law. So when I asked Nick, why shouldn't a man be allowed to cheat on his wife? Because naturally we do feel impulses to fuck other women. Um, in fact, new sexual experiences is something that we're very specifically drawn towards. This is why I if you've got a favorite porn video, it always gets boring after a week because you're constantly looking for new experiences um, for those dopamine releases in your brain, right? If you were to ask Nick, how can you say that this is immoral, sexual degeneracy, when it's something that we have a biological impulse towards, Nick starts to kind of stutter because the actual answer is, he doesn't believe in natural law. What Nick actually believes in is religious law. Nick believes in the religious law that's passed on by Christian religions, but he kind of sort of tries to back up that religious law by pulling from natural law, but only when it's convenient for him to do so. For instance, when he wants to enforce gender rules, he'll pull from natural law, but when he wants to talk about why monogamy or the nuclear family, right, is something that should be respected, well, that's a religious idea. That shit has nothing to do with fucking natural law. <laughs> that is, like being a monogamous, like six child family that never like fucks other people. That's not, that's not natural law. What the fuck? That's a religious idea. When one of these has to supersede the other. You can't just pick and choose when it's convenient, right? But for Nick to, to seed that, that, um, that all of his arguments stem from religious law probably makes his argument seem a lot weaker because with natural law, he can go, science says this thing. But for religious law, he has a much more difficult time navigating that water philosophically because a religion has to be justified, right? And to axioma axiomatically argue on the foundation of religion, proving the existence of God, or rather at least proving to people why they should believe in the existence of God, these become very, very, very difficult topics to manage. Whoa! Okay, sorry. That was a really big one. Um, <clears throat> what, what else? Sorry. Sorry. 
Sam Harris is a bit bl ha is a bit of a blind spot for Destiny, in my opinion. He's got a pretty strong opinion on him. I don't think he's going to be critical of those ideas, which is crazy because he and Harris probably agree on 99. Oh, yeah, well, that, my problem with Harris is that Harris has claimed to bridge that Izzot gap, and he really hasn't. He, he, he doesn't in a very, very immature, naive way. Uh, but, I mean, I don't usually talk... To be honest, if, if you were to list every view that I have and every view that Harris has, we probably do agree on, like, 99% of things. I just don't like the way that he, he markets his little philosophy memes. Um... Oh, so the problem with the gay and trans shit about being unnatural or abnormal or whatever is that the problem, and, and again, these are what centrists are always so fucking dishonest about. The problem is that these words are weighted, okay? And the problem is that we make these observations a fact, but we tend to tie in moral judgments with them. Let me give you an example of this. If there are five red apples and one blue apple, and I go, huh, that blue apple is kind of abnormal, it sounds like I'm just making an observation of fact there, in which case nothing is really wrong. Now, if I say there are five um, cisgendered people and one trans person, and that trans person is abnormal, those types of statements seem like they carry with them moral judgments. Now, you can sit here and pretend that they don't. You can go full JF if you want on me and say, well, if we look, if we look at the dictionary definition of the word, we actually see that it's the same in both cases. So you can pretend to do that if you want. But in the real world, if you listen to a conservative or somebody like Fuentes um, make this claim that like transgenderism or homosexuality is unnatural or abnormal, these words usually carry with them moral judgments, right? So maybe like, so I think that like if I was having a conversation with a gay or trans person, something like Contra, I could probably get away with saying something like, I think that transgender people are, are pretty abnormal. I think that's a pretty fair statement to say because it's, I mean, 99% of people are cisgendered, right? And I could probably get Contra to hesitantly agree with that statement, but only because Contra knows that my when I say that it's abnormal, I'm not ascribing a moral judgment to that word. Whereas if somebody like Fuentes says transgenderism is abnormal, there's a moral connotation to that, that not only is it abnormal, that it's morally wrong because it betrays the natural order, right? Or the religious order, whichever moral system he's adopted at the time, depending on which argument he's trying to support. <clears throat> um... Whew. Oof, Aiden should probably not be tweeting any retarded shit for like the next month or two. I would think that that would be a really bad idea for her, but I really hope she continues to do it. <laughs> uh, um... Why buy into their it's okay to be white memes? What do you gain by pushing back on it instead of just saying, LOL, who cares, and moving on? So for me personally, I don't care. But the problem, this is the problem. The problem is that um, here is something that's really damaging, okay? Here's something that's really damaging. Let's say that I have a group of 10 people, okay? Let's say that, um, let me back up one second. Let me give you a quick example. There is a reason why um, domain providers probably shouldn't remove content from their domains that they find offensive. For instance, the Daily Stormer shit, I think got nuked from, it was a GoDaddy. As a, as, a, as a content provider like that, you have to be really careful that you don't get involved in nuking content that doesn't specifically violate your TOS. And the big reason for that is because once you've drawn a line in the sand where you've said, I'm removing this content because I disagree with it on a, on a very fundamental philosophical level. I don't think Nazi should be hosted here. Well, now, I don't remember if it was GoDaddy or not. It might have been somebody else, right? Oh, it might have been Cloudflare, sorry. Um, the problem is that once you've made that statement, now you have to believe that everything else that's on there you implicitly support, right? So if I've got people talking pro-pedophilia, pro-ISIS, pro-whatever, a million other things, well, you removed the Nazi content because you said you ideologically disagreed with it. You're no longer neutral in those remains, or, or I'm sorry, in those regards. Now I have to assume that you implicitly approve of all the other content on your site. Um, that's, that makes it really hard to dig into, um, like, why you should do that, right? So backing up, so understanding that concept, right? We all understand that concept. Um, if you back up, if you've got 10 people and two of them say that women absolutely should never be allowed in the workforce, they should be banned from it, they need to stay home and have children exclusively, and that's all they should be allowed to do, and then you have eight people who say... Um, 
I really don't think women should be working. Um, it's just wrong. It's not natural. I guess if they really want to, sure, but it really shouldn't be encouraged. We need to find ways to culturally discourage it. Um, you know, this is really bad. You have a really big problem when you have a group. This is where the centrist cancer comes in, the prostate centrist cancer that exists in the deepest assholes of the internet, right? The problem that you run into is the centrist will come in and they will lambast the fuck. Andy did this when he talked about that one actual Nazi they got of. The, the centrist will lambast the two people. They'll go, oh, that's sexist. That's wrong. That's horrible. Blah, 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 blah. But when all of the centrists get together and they attack those two people, the uh, the eight other people seem infinitely more credible because it's like, OK, well, look, the centrists who are here to make sure that we don't pull too far into one side. Well, they got rid of the other two people that are actually really, really bad. So I guess the other eight people aren't really that bad at all. Right. And that's why you see this weird wishy washy area where you get people like roaming millennials saying things like, well, you know, Richard Spencer and I had a really nice conversation and it wasn't that bad. And there are some people that are way worse than him. It's like, OK, um, that's a really big problem. It's really difficult to um, it's really difficult to navigate those waters responsibly. That was Theron. Was that her name? Theron's problem with roaming millennials is that she feels she wasn't responsible in her conversation with um, Richard Spencer because she didn't really challenge him on anything. Like like I think I said Dave Rubin syndrome, but I, it might have gotten cut off. But like Dave Rubin does that all the time, where he brings extremists onto a show. He doesn't really challenge them on any points. He just gives them a platform to kind of talk about their extremist beliefs, and then they just kind of walk away, and everybody feels a little bit dumber at the end of the day for it. Ooh. Um. Um. What, do we have any other questions or anything else you want to talk about real quick while I'm here? Because I have a couple new dudes in here. Speaking of Rumming Millennial and Richard Spencer, this was a 10 out of 10. Yeah, but I, I do stand by that there is a difference between a debate and an interview. A lot of my subscribers were happy to actually see what Richard Spencer says. And, you know, if your problem is that he that, but I, I do Damn. stand by that. What a dumb fucking comment. Holy shit. Uh, I don't really want to like, I don't really want to like, I could bans with Medicar. I don't really want to like friendly bans with them though. It would be possible to do it, but I actually, I, like, I really hate him. I really do think he's like a huge piece of shit. Um, so I don't really want to, I really don't want to do it. Uh, no, Ugh, I feel kind of dirty. Um, can you explain the voter ID stuff? Do I need to go over that again? <laughs> I mean, I feel like I've gone over voter ID so many times. Oh God, I feel like a broken record. Do it, destroy him. Oh, no, on the Sundari thing, I was going to tweet like a to stop Baka, like a little cute meme or whatever, but I don't really want to. I don't know if she's being retarded or just being dishonest when she doesn't say anything wrong with a lot of my friends like Spencer. I think that like it's really, really, really hard. And I think that contrapoints. So this is a really important um, part of the aspect of gaslighting, right? So when you try to gaslight somebody, what you're trying to do is you're trying to make them second guess everything. That's the goal of gaslighting is to make somebody doubt their own reality. So for instance, let's say that you are um, a lot of people that cheat do this, right? So let's say that um, you're in the process of cheating on somebody or, or even if you're just trying to fuck with, I guess, a significant other in general. Right. The goal is to try to change as many stories to try to provide as much counter evidence to reality as possible so that they begin to doubt what they believe to be true. Right. So you lie about people that you've talked to. You lie about places you've been. You lie about even things that you shouldn't even lie about. Um, this is like I think this is a common like abuser tactic where like you'll hide things from your partner or you'll move things or you'll, or you'll reschedule things or whatever to make them start to doubt the reality. The problem is that when a person falls into that trap where you start to doubt everything, you can only try trust that person to give you what reality actually is and it gives you a really warped view on, on what you can believe is true or not right so the um 
The problem when you talk about gaslighting that a lot of people do on the alt right is, and and people understand this, fascists um, aren't stupid, right? And you can see this in a lot of strategy that they discuss on on 4chan or um, um, I've seen posts on Daily Storm or whatnot that do about this, right? Is your goal is never to say things, or um, even better, you can go Wikipedia Southern Strategy, right? Southern Strategy is a good gaslighting thing, right? The idea is that you always say things that you can always back away from. Right. So, for instance, somebody will say something like, I don't like Mexicans in our country. OK, um, Mexicans do horrible things in our country. Mexicans don't contribute to our country. Um, most Mexicans are bad people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then, like, if you try to call them out on something where you say, like, um, OK, well, you're targeting all of these groups of people like um, don't you think like it's a, you're kind of like got a lot of racial undertones here. And they say something like, whoa, um, Mexico is a nation. OK, that's not a race. Right. When they were really talking about Hispanics, but they say Mexicans. Well, well, they're not Mexicans. They're Americans. So but but I thought we were saying, right. Stuff like that. We say like a lot of things where or, or on, on Fox News, I commonly say right the word like thug. Like any time I hear a, a, a white person use the word thug, I have to stop and think for a moment. And it's like, wait. Is this per or when somebody uses the insult low IQ, I have to like read and I've got to be like, hold on, is this guy like a, like does he mean like race realist low IQ or but this is kind of the goal of um this is kind of the goal of this kind of conversation. This is good when people like me or Contra are having second thoughts. Um, Contra pointed out something that, um where she saw a picture and it was of a white child and the and the slogan was like we need to defend our future. Contra was like, is this white nationalist propaganda? But she, but by then it was like, but no, it was a picture from the ACLU. It very clearly wasn't, right? But this is kind of the goal of, of that type of gaslighting is you have to make people constantly stop and evaluate. Like, is what I'm looking at right now like white nationalist propaganda or is this just like a normal thing that it's not, right? So when you're constantly gaslighting, which is always the goal of these people, right? And Lauren Southern does this a lot. When Lauren Southern talks about like, let's keep Paris traditionalist. Let's talk about Western values. Let's talk about Western culture. Why can't we protect our demographics? Um, why can't we protect our Christian values, right? When you dog whistle and you signal, this is why I got so mad at roaming millennia when I said, what are American values? And she says, um, speaking English? Bullshit. You do not fucking believe that even for a fucking microsecond, you lying bitch. You do not believe that speaking English is the only thing that makes you an American. Why is that the first thing that you go to, right? But the problem is that like when you ask somebody, what are Western values? You very clearly expose that like they have no fucking idea what they're talking about, right? There is no such thing as that. We, it's funny because as an American, we make fun of Europeans all the time that try to stereotype Americans, right? Well, all of America is this thing. Bullshit, dude. People in Kentucky don't act like people in fucking Washington. And, and even people in Seattle don't act like people who live like in the fucking rural Washington. And people in Omaha in Nebraska don't act like people way the fuck out west in fucking Grand Island. And people in Hawaii aren't the same as people in LA. People in LA sure as fuck aren't the same as people in San Francisco, right? These people are massively different. And even in a city like LA or San Francisco, you can find different groups of people, right? There is no unifying American fucking idea. That's ridiculous, right? But this idea that we want immigrants to come here and 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 integrate to what? Integrate to redneck culture, integrate to rap culture, integrate to people that watch NASCAR, integrate to integrate to people that are religious. In what way? The people that are Mormon, people that are Christian, people that are Jewish, people that are Muslim. What what how integrate to what? Um the gaslighting thing. We were talking about the gaslighting thing. Yeah, the gaslighting thing, Um, it, it, it makes it so you have to constantly stop and evaluate every statement. So that when somebody comes out and says something like, um, um, it's okay to be white, it's like, yeah, it is. But what do you mean by that? You know, like, I have to stop and think, like, I mean, like, if somebody, for instance, if somebody like, um, like, Z um, Zuckerberg, I guess... Um, if somebody came up and asked, like, um, like, you know, like, do you think it's okay to be white? I'd probably be like, um, yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so like, so this guy in chat, geez, Destiny, I could easily debate circles on this. American values are things like free speech and equal protection under the law. 
Oh, those aren't American values, my dude. Um, I mean, free speech is something that a lot of people around the world believe in. And free speech is something that's, that's that even in America, we disagree exactly on what concepts of free speech are. That's why your president, Donald J. Trump, is talking about pressing charges against a journalistic organizations that he that publish things that he doesn't like. Um, that's why Donald J. Trump, your president, has tweeted out that he would like to revoke citizenship from people that burn the flag. So no, even things like free speech are very hotly contested issues in the United States. Should you be allowed to burn the flag or desecrate the flag? Or should that be a form of protective speech? Or should it be banned? Should that be punishable by federal whatever, you know? So no, even um, even things like that are not agreed on. Even the idea of free speech is not something that's agreed on in, in the United States. Um, Burning the flag is an action, not speech. Nice. That's a nice hot take there, my dude. And speaking is actually the action of vibrating your vocal cords. It's not speech. <laughs> Destiny, I agree completely with what you're saying, but do you have examples of other countries' ideals? Like, do Japan or Sweden or England have specific ideals? Um, the more homogenous a country is, the more likely you probably are to find similar ideas pervasive in their culture. Um... But I, I can't speak for those countries. I don't spend a lot of time like in Japan. Um, I don't think I've ever been in Japan. And I haven't spent much time like in South Korea or Taiwan. So I don't know if I could like say for sure. Um, I mean, Taiwan is a, is a little island. Maybe you're more likely to find. But like even amongst um, even white people in the United States have very, very, very different um, points of view, you know. Um. Would you ever have someone like Ben Shapiro on the stream? If we had a specific conversation to talk about, I would love to talk to Ben Shapiro. I think he engages in some of the worst data manipulation and blatant dishonesty I've ever seen in my life. Um, I can't tell if he's smart enough that he does it intentionally or if that degree at Harvard was just paid for by mommy and daddy. I really don't know. It's really hard for me to tell sometimes. What about the fear-mongering tactic of like, well, if we let X happen, the entire United States will burn and it will be your fault? Um, that's like a really hard thing to answer. Um, <clears throat> to be fair to Shapiro, he graduated cum laude or whatever his class, right? He graduated top of his class at Harvard, so I imagine he's pretty smart, or at least he's a good speaker. But he engages in some really dishonest data manipulation, so it makes me wonder sometimes. Um, wait, what did I just read before that? Um Oh, this is where I always point to, like, there are problems that exist. This, so this is a problem that the left has, and this is a problem that the left has had that they won't deal with, is that there are problems with immigration. There are problems with integration. There are problems with different types of people coming with different values to the country and, and moving here. These are growing pains that you have to deal with. But the difference is that, like, the left refuses to acknowledge these, and the right makes it sound like they want to throw out the entire fucking system because of some problems. The thing is that you have to be a decent, rational fucking human being, and you have to come to the middle, and you have to say, listen, there are problems with immigration, but there are also massive fucking benefits, so let's fix the problems, right? Rather than throwing out the whole fucking system. Maybe the whole system does break in the end. Like, sure, and if it does, and yeah, fuck it, it's a fucking net negative, then we, then we go back to on it and we throw it out. But, like, it doesn't seem like we're at that point right now with something like immigration, you know? Destiny, to say that there isn't such a thing as integration is like completely denying that different cultures exist. I'm not saying that different cultures don't exist. I'm just saying that this integration thing comes off to me as a dog whistle. That's what it sounds like. When I hear somebody talk about integration, and this might, I totally admit that this might just be like an emotional, irrational position, but when I hear people dog whistle integration, all I hear is they're too brown for me. That's all I hear because like when every time I've, and this has always happened, every time I've questioned somebody, when they talk about Western values or integration, Whenever I go, what does integration mean to you? I never get a real answer. So, like, what the fuck are you talking about, right? Uh, like, I'll get some bullshit, like, um, they should, uh, speak English. Like, okay, so you're okay with all the Muslims here that speak English? Like, um, well, um, uh, women's rights. Like, what kind of women's rights? Well, um, uh, like, um, not stoning women. Like, okay. Like, how many, how many Islamic countries around the world? Like, there are countries that are Islamic that don't stone women, Right? There are Muslim people that live all across Europe. There are over 3 million Muslims in the United States that don't stone women. 
right? So are you okay with these people being here then? Would you say that these people have sufficiently integrated to American values, whatever the fuck that means? You know, like... <clears throat> When they, when they say they want integration, it seems they're just more afraid of the in, importation of Muslim values that they completely generalize rather than... I mean, yeah, but like the problem is that, and I sufficiently proved this, Nick did it for me in the conversation, Muslim fundamentalist values aren't really that far away from crazy conservative fundamentalist values, especially when you talk about things like women. Some of the shit that Saudi Arabia used to do, because I guess they're changing it now, was like a fucking dream for Nick Fuentes, right? And he proved it in the conversation. Women not being allowed to work, women not being allowed to drive, women supposed to stay at home only and take care of children women shouldn't show too much skin in public and it should be punishable by law these are dream ideas to radical conservative thought and lauren southern herself has engaged in like extreme slut shaming to people like Nicki minaj saying things like Nicki minaj like why are you so mad that people are calling you a whore and want to just fuck you and have no value for you as a human do you see the type of stuff you wear that sounds like something a fundy muslim would say <laughs> like what, what what you do you really don't see the connection here What's the difference between you telling a woman that she needs to cover up versus a Muslim telling a woman that she needs to wear a burqa? Well, one of them stones the other part. Okay, well, so if, if you got rid of the stoning then, you're okay with extremist Islam? So you're telling me that if extremist Islamist people, if extremist Muslims stop stoning people, their entire belief system becomes okay and acceptable to you? That's the line that you draw? That's the only difference between you and a fundamentalist Islam? A fundamentalist Muslim is the stoning? Do you know how stupid that sounds? Like... <clears throat> Oh, that was Ariana Grande, not uh, Nicki Minaj. I'm sorry, my bad. Destiny, I think these people have a certain value that they associate with Western values, and to them, that is a real thing, even if they cannot describe it. On the Okay, but when you say that, on the flip side, they know very well that it isn't what Muslim countries have or African countries. From a visual perspective, that makes sense. Okay, but when you say that, do you see how with reading with what you just said, how what it sounds to me, what you're talking about is white people? Like, here's a legitimate question. Besides, like, the alt writers like, obsession with Jews, I don't even know if Jews count as white people. It depends on who you ask, right? Here's my question. When was the last time a group of white people moved anywhere and all of these conservatives didn't like them? Has this happened? Because we do it with Central Americans, we do it with Mexicans and Hispanics. We do it with everybody from the Muslim world. We do it from people with Africa, from Africa. Is there this big migrating group of white people that everybody has a problem with, or? Irish? Yeah, we did it a long time ago, but now they consider Irish people fully part of the fucking group. They don't even deny it. They're, I'm sorry, they don't even acknowledge it. Nick Fuentes, like, barely even acknowledges that, that white, that, that Irish people were considered subhuman back then, or Italians were considered lesser people. Now he thinks that it's all the same. Fuentes unironically argues that in the 1700s, we were trying to build a white Christian European society when, one, the concept of whiteness wasn't even understood the same way that we understand it now, because the British people saw themselves probably more as Anglo-Saxons than just some weird, homogenous, white European collective. And I have, like, four quotes to back that it up and I wish I would have gotten a machine gun these out at him but I couldn't and two um, somehow Christianity was completely left out of every single part of the Constitution and even in the um, um, rights endowed by their creator that comes from the Declaration of Independence even that phrasing very carefully says their creator not our creator not the creator not Yahweh not Christian God right like, all the wording is pretty fucking specific um, And guess what? When Irishmen and Italians immigrated to the United States, guess what they did? They moved to the big cities to find work. They formed ghettos and they ghettoized. There was high crime and, and, and poverty in some of these communities. Hmm, what does that sound like? But for some reason, Irishmen and Italians get a pass today? Why? Fucking Jefferson himself, didn't he make, like, a literal transcription of the Bible where he deleted all of the ancient mystical bullshit references? Like... <clears throat> I don't remember if that was Jefferson or not.
Yeah, I have and Dagon. Who do you think is an intellectually honest person who you'd consider your opposition? Um, I like I like talking to people that are on the extreme right. Like people like Fuentes. I appreciate Fuentes because I think Fuentes is pretty honest about most of his positions. Um, the people that really bother me right now are the centrists. So people like Armored Skeptic, people like Chris Ragon, people like Sargon of Akkad, um, people like that um, Andy Wargall or whatever. Um, People like Roaming Millennial, people like Lauren Southern. These are the people that bother me right now because they seem to defend every all the subtext of the right while ignoring that it exists. I say the right. I should say like the extremist right or whatever. Or the Nazis or whatever. I don't know. I think Fuentes pretty honestly represents most of what he believes, though. I don't think he dog whistles or sub or whatever. Or like Mouthy Buddha. <laughs> Fucking. Oh, man. Would you really consider Lauren a centrist? No, but she considers herself a centrist, I think. Doesn't she? The failure to assimilate is also super dishonest because white Italians still have little Italys in the mafia. Sure. Or the mob, right? Organized crime brought in by immigrants. Immigrants that come to this country bring in organized crime and even can influence government in the cases of New York City in some ways. Um... Fuck, wasn't the mob? Um, I never know how much of this is true. I'm always really careful to speak about this on stream because my um, because my aunt is fucking crazy. But she used to work in the NYPD, so she tells me things. Um, the mafia. Wasn't the mafia involved in literally running some of the public services in New York City for a while? Like things like dumpster trucks and shit. They were actually running some of those social services. Um, but I guess we don't talk about them because they're white. I'm never exactly sure how much of what my aunt tells me is true versus just like some meme shit, so I have to be careful of it. I don't consider myself a centrist, but I tend to fall pretty central on political compass tests. Am I a shit person? I mean, I consider myself a centrist. I'm pretty big on guns rights. I like my guns, and I like to go shooting, and I don't want to see them taken by the government. Um, I'm also pro-life, believe it or not. I really don't like abortion. Um, I wish that we could find a way to make it so that nobody ever got one. Um... I'm I'm very very pro capitalist. Oh God, I hope excuse me isn't watching because he's gonna get really angry when I say that. But I'm I'm very pro um, capitalist. I'm very big on free markets. Um, I think that most economic solutions that we implement into society should work with the market instead of causing frictions in the market. Um, so like I mean I'm a pretty centrist kind of person. I think. Um, because I am left on some issues and right on other issues. When I, when I make fun of centrists, I'm talking about people like Sargon that consider themselves liberal, but then they like machine gun fire out right leaning talking points every fucking second they can. You know. Yeah, maybe I'm center left. I don't know. Yeah, the problem isn't being a centrist. The problem is being a little dishonest, cucky, fence shitter fuck who's too scared to take a strong position on anything because you're too lazy to do the due diligence to actually form an opinion about it. But then you sit there in the center and you call out everybody else's opinion at it, a.k.a. somebody like Armored Skeptic, somebody that's too stupid or lazy, or like Sargon, somebody that's too stupid or lazy to actually get an informed opinion. How the fuck can Sargon go on, um, on, uh, fuck, who was it? It wasn't Joe Rogan. Where did Sargon, who, which podcast did we watch recently where Sargon was on? He's like, oh, uh, I don't know anything about global warming. It's just not something that's very interesting to me. I just don't know anything about global warming. I don't know. It seems like a dumb issue. And then meanwhile, like, look at this fucking tweet that I found from this fucking feminist who goes to UCLA. I've, she's gonna fucking subvert the whole fucking western world. Look at her fucking blue hair. Like, these are your priorities, dude. These are the things that you think are the most important things today in political discourse is something that, like, a student tweeted from Berkeley. Like, okay, dude. What made you become a profiler? What is, oh, a pro-lifer. Oh, I think that fetuses are humans. That's my big problem with it. Pragmatically though, I don't think you can ever outlaw abortion because there's no way to prevent a woman from getting an abortion. So it seems like outlawing, it just makes a whole bunch of really bad shit happen in society. So I, my goal would always be to reduce the number of abortions through things like access to contraception and sexual education. What are your thoughts on the Young Turks? I don't know. I try to stay away from circle jerks. I mean, like, if you're here, if you know about me, you usually know about me because I'm debating people on the right. I'm not a big fan of circle jerks. I don't like, I don't think that much gets done circle jerking with a friend. I think that you, um, I think that you have to challenge other people's opinions on things to strengthen your own opinions, too. Um, yeah.
Fuentes is super dishonest with the Jews. Oh yeah, that was kind of weird. I wonder if I should start profiling these people to make them answer for tweets they've done before debating them. Because I'm pretty sure I've seen Fuentes hint multiple times at like the Jewish question shit. I would have to go back and look though. I'm not really sure. Because it's always hard to tell who's being super honest about it and who's being really like kind of subtle about it. Um, but I, I feel like I've seen um, Fuentes be like overtly like um, anti-Semitic. I could be wrong though, maybe. maybe um, If 20 viable fetuses and a human were in a burning building together and you could only rescue one, which would you save? Um, I'm going to assume for purposes of the question that the, the fetuses are healthy and that once you get them out, they can easily be trans... Like, the, the question is a little weird because, like, can you easily get them out and then... Um, if I So, like, if we phrase this question a little bit more honestly, let's say that there is a, um, let's say that you have 20 fetuses in vials, and then you have, um, and then you've got one person you can save, and if you take the 20 fetuses out of the hospital, there are, like, machines that you can put them in, and it's guaranteed that they will grow up and reach term or whatever, like, immediately, or not immediately, but, like, that, that's, like, a guaranteed thing, then, yeah, you would save the fetuses, I think, assuming they were all white people. If they were browns, then you'd have to weigh them differently, because I'm not sure if those brown fetuses could integrate into our culture like the white ones could. <laughs> As it no bullshit said women shouldn't phone in his videos, but then they should in the debate. Oh, um, I don't take any, no bullshit is a fucking idiot. If you're bored, you can go watch up any of the conversations I've had with him on my stream. He's a total, he's an idiot. Like, um, not even like in an idiot in the way Sargon is an idiot. He's like a level below Sargon. He's really, really, really dumb. He's really stupid. I wouldn't take anything he says seriously. Um, his content isn't really worth, um, consuming at all. There's nothing valuable there, I don't think. Even if you're looking for opposition opinion, there's nothing valuable there. Not in the same way that consuming Sargon or Lauren's content would be. Please explain the gun rights debate. I'm begging you. It drives me nuts because I don't know which side to take. Take which side you are, whatever you want to believe in, my dude. The right to bear arms is something that's constitutionally protected in the United States. If you want to have federal infringements against that, you probably need to have a constitutional amendment to revoke the Second Amendment or augment it in some way. I like the right to own guns. I don't like the idea that we should take something away because it causes some harm in society. However, guns cause a huge problem in American society. Over 30,000, 33,000 or whatever people a year die from guns, 20-some thousand to suicide, 10-some thousand to homicides, and we have problems with mass shootings that no other country in the world has. So clearly something has to fucking change. So when you talk about some form of regulation or some way to keep, like, um, fucked up people from getting firearms, I'm okay with putting up more barriers to get there. Um, and maybe even, you could probably even pull me over to the anti-gun side if you argued it hard enough. The problem is that, um... Yeah, it, it just, I mean, I like guns, but I mean, people fuck it up. <laughs> I also would like the idea of having no speed limits on the roads, but I don't know how realistic that is either. Can I nitpick your chance stance as a pro-life person? No, nah, I don't really want to get into a huge abortion argument. You can bring it up to me some other time, though. <laughs> Talk about the culture argument, please. I think it has some merit. The attitude of society will reflect in government eventually. The problem, the pro this is always, this is like the most popular, um, like autism centrist, I probably shouldn't say autism centrist. Retarded? Can I say retarded? That's probably even worse. This is the most popular retarded centrist argument, okay? Is, is, so you say to a centrist, listen, on the right, here are the problems that exist today. These problems are enacted via policy, and they're echoed by statesmen, by elected officials on the right, okay? And then the person on the, and then the centrist will go, okay, well, these leftist problems exist in the schools, in the universities, okay? These are big problems, right? And then you'll go, okay, um, how are these as bad as the things on the right? And then what they really are saying without saying is they're saying, well, one day, the left could become as influential on the right in current politics. That's what they're really saying. And when you rephrase it like that, it sounds really fucking stupid, right? So you're saying that one day some of these left problems could become influential, like the right problems on the right already are? Doesn't that mean we should deal with the right problems now and then we can deal with the left ones in the future or something? Like, it doesn't really make much sense, you know? So you don't think they are bad? I think that the left has a huge problem with free speech. I think it's really bad. I think that kids in colleges are way too used to being coddled and I have a very difficult time confronting people with different opinions than them. That's something that really bothers me. But I'm not going to sit here and, and be a fucking idiot that thinks that those problems are the same as Trump threatening to fucking nuke North Korea or some shit on Twitter. These are very different problems. The fact that the majority governors in the United States are Republican, the majority of congressmen and, sen and senators are Republican, and the president is a Republican, right? These are things, they have much more power to actually enact 
affect real life policy and shit um, that has real impacts on more on millions and millions of people, right? Like you want to talk to me about something that like like Lauren is like my college professor taught me these things. That's really cool. The Republicans just tried to repeal health care. How are these things comparable? Destiny, you literally voted for a self-proclaimed socialist for president, so I don't think you have much ground for your arguments right now. So you got to be careful, excuse me, because you're starting to mix up your own definitions again. I know you love doing that a lot. Bernie might have been a self-proclaimed socialist, but that was like a, so a democratic socialist or whatever. Bernie was never advocating for socialist policies. Also, I supported Bernie because I'm almost a single-issue voter because I think that corporate funding in our political system is the number one detriment to politics right now in the United States. I think, oh, but you probably don't agree with that. No, you wouldn't. Um, but that, for me, I'm a single-issue voter on that. I think Think that outside corporations funding politicians is one of the biggest um, is one of the biggest problems in the United States right now. I would vote for somebody with quite a few different political beliefs than me if they actually supported that position, uh, for sure. That's one of the big reasons why I hated Hillary. She had tons of corporate money behind her. Donald Trump exposed that. You have to give him that destiny. No, he didn't. But Donald Trump is rich. He doesn't need corporate funding. That's arguably even worse. What? <laughs> His constituents are the companies that, that he fucking works for. I hated Hillary, but I voted for her in a fucking heartbeat over Trump. Oh, it's not even close. I will sit here and scream how much I hate Hillary from the rooftops, but when it comes time to vote, I didn't even give Trump a second glance. It was such an easy vote. I hated voting for her because I fucking hate her. But over Trump? Whew. Destiny, you don't understand how corporate policy influences politics at all. Okay. Can you rail off all the reasons you hated Hillary? Um, I, I I don't really like to talk about it anymore because it's not really relevant, but I think that Hillary um, was always politically expedient in all of her positions. Um, it seemed like for things like gay marriage, um, it always seemed like she would come around to an issue when it was like pull tested well to do so. And that always like really bothered me with Hillary. Um, I also didn't like the amount of corporate funding that she got. It. That was like a huge fucked up issue to me. I really didn't like her corporate funding. And Hillary had one of the most anti-Second Amendment stances that a person could possibly take. I really didn't like the way that she had had, um, uh, I really didn't like her position on the Second Amendment. She was almost like almost trying to like ban fucking guns. She wanted to hold like manufacturers responsible for gun deaths or some shit, some crazy fucking shit. Um, ah, fuck, I'm trying to remember. I don't even remember most of the Hillary positions. Economically, policy policy wise, I probably would have agreed with most of what Hillary did. I really don't like the State Department's or the Obama administration's, um, the Obama administration or his State Department's policy in the Middle East. But I, that's not really changing much anyway. Even under Trump, right? He's talking about getting more people over there. We bombed Syria. We up um, more drone strikes in Yemen and shit. I don't know. So policy wise, I probably would have agreed with Hillary on most things. I just I didn't I really didn't like the corporate funding, and I really didn't feel like every time she was talking, she was like the amalgamation of polling data that she'd done the day before. That always bothered me. No, I I probably wouldn't have liked her foreign policy, but Hillary um, but Hillary and Trump's foreign policy probably isn't all that different effectively maybe unless trump pans out to do some different shit i'm not sure um have you considered using the veil of ignorance in your arguments yeah i'm you know somebody talked to me about that apparently that's um that's um rawls um curtain of some bullshit or whatever yeah i try to i try to i try to model most of my ethics off of that Oh, and then Hillary lying about her combat shit. <laughs> Can we watch this? I'm sorry, I love this clip so much. This is one of my favorite fucking memes, dude. Am I going to be able to find this? Six. Just right here, real quick. Let me change your overlays really quick. This is, one of my, this is one of my favorite Hillary, Hillary Clinton has long been touting her experience, but questions are being raised now about whether she's done some embellishing of her record. Here's investigative correspondent Cheryl Atkinson. 
It was supposed to be an example of Hillary Clinton's battle-tested experience. I remember landing under sniper fire. In the speech last week, Senator Clinton was referring to her visit to Tuzla, Bosnia in 1996 as First Lady. The brutal war was over, but hostilities continued. And though the trip was exactly 12 years ago tomorrow, the memory seemed etched in Clinton's mind. There was supposed to be some kind of a greeting ceremony at the airport, but instead we just ran with our heads down to get into the vehicles uh, to get to our base. Problem is, that's not what happened. And we should know, CBS News accompanied the First Lady and daughter Chelsea on that Bosnia trip. That's Senator Clinton talking to me on the military flight into Tuzla. And these are the pictures we recorded of the greeting ceremony when the plane landed. Literal first Compare graders. That to Senator Clinton's account. I remember landing under sniper fire. There was no greeting ceremony, and we basically were told to run to our cars. Now that is what happened. Thank you. There was no sniper fire either when Senator Clinton visited two Army outposts where she posed for photos, and no sniper fire back at the base. Last night I where she sang at a USO show starring Sinbad and Sheryl Crow. Bosnia was not quite as dramatic as video online in just the past few days. The sniper fire, the corkscrew helicopter maneuvers. A reminder that in politics, memory should always match the videotape. Cheryl Ack um, I always like these little lies in Hillary. They were pretty fucking stupid. But Trump has lied about way worse things at this point. Trump's lies are unfortunately so much more stupid. It really bothers me how blatantly Trump will just lie and like never get called on it and nobody cares about it. That really, really, really bothers me, especially when these right cucks um, would, would hold Hillary to every single fucking lie she told. But then Trump can say some shit like, uh, I had the largest electoral college win ever. Oh, okay. Well, of any Republican for the past 50 years. Oh, well, um, whatever. Those were the numbers that were given to me. Like, okay, dude, I had the biggest crowd ever in anything. Like, um, I talked to the Boy Scouts and the Pope and they actually said we were cool. And then like the Boy Scouts tweets like, we didn't talk to fucking Trump. Like he just lied about fucking everything um jesus christ oh yeah there's even worse lies than that when trump tweets that um i would have won the popular vote if three million illegals hadn't voted three million illegals really where was the data for that dog here was her thing okay so initially holy shit fucking ads on these fucking pages mute all this shit so Lauren said that the Independent wrote articles saying that white people shouldn't have babies, was what she said, okay? Um, um, she said that the Independent was literally writing articles about how white people shouldn't be allowed to have kids, okay? Here is the headline from this article. Having children is one of the most destructive things you can do to the environment, says researchers. One fewer child per family can save an average of 58.6 tons of CO2 equivalent emissions per year. I like how I was able to guess what the article was about without ever even reading it or ever seeing it or ever even hearing about the article. It's just, I don't know, maybe I might be clairvoyant. Do you think maybe I have like psychic powers? Um, this is literally what I expected the, um, the, the article to be about. Researchers from Lund University in Sweden found having one child uh, can reduce an average of 58.6 tons of CO2. Eating meat, driving a car, and traveling by aeroplane made up the list of the most polluting things people can do to the planet. But having children is one of the top. There you go, dude. Wow. Did you notice that no BS didn't deny being a virgin and neither did it? Yeah, he probably is. It's probably not a good ground to attack him on. I probably shouldn't do the ad hominems. I don't mind being savage to people, but doing the ad hominems is probably pretty mean. Although he's done ad hominems before. Do I really give a fuck about no bullshit's feelings? I really don't. I really don't care about I really hate him as a person. Um, I'm not sure. I have to think about that, I guess. If whether or not I should engage in that kind of uh, memory. I don't know. The, the the problem that I have, the big problem that I have is like, for some reason, the right has like a, a has like a, um, they have like a monopoly on being savage as fuck. But like most of these guys are like overweight fucking neckbeards that have never seen a girl or a razor in their entire fucking lives. So it's like, they're ripe for material, right? Ripe in scent and in like comedic materials. Like, how can I not like lay into these people when they try to act like they're beacons of fucking, uh, of, of objectivity and that they have like a monopoly and all of the insulting savagery and shit. Like, why would I not like dig into somebody like this? You know, fuck. It's, it's too easy, dude. Um, yeah, I don't know. They get mad when you do it, but they ad hominem all the time. It makes me so mad. Why do I hate him? I hate no bullshit because I legitimately think he's like... I like. <clears throat> I would be shocked to find that no bullshit dresses himself in the morning. That would be surprising to me. If I had like a video of him waking up in the morning, figuring out which dresser has his clothes, 
figuring out the order of like what goes on first, pants and then underwear or underwear and then pants. Like if I found out that he was able to execute all of these decisions perfectly with, with 100% accuracy on a daily basis without getting input from some kind of family member or more likely like a caretaker, I would be shocked to find that out. He's that stupid. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm being really mean. I really don't like no bullshit. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll be right back. Um, hold on. Give me like a couple minutes, okay? I like how she immediately told you off for calling no bullshit fat, but then just laughed when Mr. Medicare came on and literally the only thing he did was call you short. Yeah, I saw that shit coming from a mile away. Of course, um, are the centrist... What, is Romy Millennial? Does she claim to be a centrist? I don't know. They, all these righties call themselves liberal centrists and whatnot. Was like, uh, that was totally not needed. You totally don't need to call him fat or virgin. That's But then like Nick Degenerate... Nick Degenerate Trans Fuentes comes on like, well, yeah, in my society, people like you would have to go see a doctor and take medication. Um, you're a natural, a degenerate, blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, and she's just like tabbed out, you know, probably reading, uh, you know, the Daily Stormer to find some more talking points or some shit.